Hello, people. How are you tonight? Let me get the chat up. Hey, everyone. There we go. Okay. Rock and roll. Can everybody see us and hear us? I always got to ask because I generally fuck that up. <laughs> Going to go full potato. You never know. Oh, they can see us. All right. So obviously, as everyone can see, we have an illustrious, fantastic, very handsome, nice new shirt wearing guest named Dimitri, the Vaping Greek. <laughs> we're very excited to have him because he's a wealth of knowledge and he's just a fun fucking guy. So we're going to... Um, we're going to have some fun tonight, man. It's going to be cool. We're going to get some information out, but we're also going to have some fun. So Rock and roll. Maybe, Adam, since you're such a sweetheart and you're so polite, maybe go through and say hello to the people in the chat, and then we will do a buffet. Awesome. I haven't looked at that at all, so uh, I'm well I'm, prepared for that. I'm glad that you're a professional, uh, dude. You're a real fucking professional. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, Adam. <laughs> uh, of course, Raven Shadow, we have need to say hi to you. Uh, Mr. Brett Jordan, T. Getz. Cherry Lie for the first time. I hope I said your name right. Uh, who's come across from uh, the SMM uh, extravaganza Absolutely. with uh, Mr. Dimitri? Uh, the tick begins. Shannon. Amigos. Yep. Mr. Beekman is here. Shane. Uh, uh, Dimitri is here. Some guy <laughs> called Dimitri. Some some Greek guy. Opa. Yep. Mr. Da <laughs> Mr. David Moyle. Vapor's Odyssey. Uh, DTF is in the house. DTF. Mr. Paul Labworks. Hi to Paul. Yar. Uh, Mowgli Vapes, Coco Neal, Becky Buck Wild, Becky and, Buck Wild. and of course, uh, everybody's favorite uncle, Mr. Addy Tooney. Is there here. he is. Mr. Addy Tooney. Ooh. Yep. Uh, Dennis Michael, uh, Texas Cloud Town. Mr. J is here. Mr. ID Voker from the Middle East. ID Voker, my boy. What's up, brother? Yeah. Uh, Cloudy Dave, and if I've missed anyone, I'm really sorry, but... Uh, Steven Sard, my friend Steven yeah. Sard, and T. Crow. I don't know if you got T. Crow. I did not. PSS in the chat. What's up, buddy? And a guy named Legion Vapes that doesn't have a soul because he's a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, okay, so would you want to just get that silly buffet thing out of the way? But I definitely want to do it tonight because I got I got stuff with oh, me. Oh, he's excited. I am. He's prepped. He's I ready. Am. Since since uh, Vandal always has the same thing, why don't we start with you? Same thing. Go ahead, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Okay, sure. So, Addy Tooney, I got the Tooney K fun on the Purge Slim piece, which is actually a pretty cool little situation with a very super secret Breeze Tones alien inside of there. And Shannon, the tick begins. I am rocking the uh, purge that he sent me, the Back to Basics V3. And I did clean it up because he said that it was too patinaed last time and I felt bad. And I got the Berserker something. One of the Berserkers are on here, which is pretty rad. And of course, got the NorCal Sick Boy Vindicator and the Topside Duel with uh, the Goat. All with liquids aplenty. Adam! <laughs> uh, well, of course, <laughs> because we have Mr. Dimitri on, I have a little Inikin uh, EQ, which I uh, quite love as my little work device. Uh, I also have another MTL, uh, the Saver. There's my camera. Uh, the Saver from Vaping with Vic on the Proton. And uh, Double Trouble uh, Topsides and Passage from uh, Matthew Cully is a guy who's probably going to make it in the vaping industry. Uh, that <laughs> does some good designing. And that's basically it. Uh, Mr. Labworks uh, juice in, excuse me, liquid in all of those. And also uh, something from the US, uh, Fresh Farms, which is a strawberry farm cake and uh, strawberry butter cake. Uh, that's it. I'd like to pass it to Mr. Dimitri because uh, I, I want to see all his uh, stack purges. Right? You know he's you know he's got him. <laughs> like a five mod requirement to be on this show. <laughs> usually we just usually we just blow through it pretty quick. I think that the memo, uh, very very simple detonator with the most underrated uh, sub ohm tank on the market, the I sub, and nice. a very nice restricted DL at forty watts. Fantastic. The Adept with my slide. I got a new four mil prototype on this. Uh, yeah. Rocking at 15 watts with 1.2 ohm coil. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, then I've got a couple of little things that I'm working here on the bottom. I am testing out the one for uh, Joytech, which is another pod system. I always got the EQ with some 20 milligram pow in there and a little beep uh, with the four mil pod in it. 
Nice. MTL for days, brothers. MTL for days. <laughs> All right. Out of depth, that man. Was fun. That looks right. That yeah, was fun. you literally did more than I did. So, okay, Dimitri, <laughs> take it down a second notch. All right. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> oh, okay. Steve. I'll pass it on. To, I'm supposed to pass it on. I'm yes. Just, now, ladies and gentlemen, passing it on to Steve. That, that, that radio voice, I love it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna break the mold, guys, because uh, I got it really simple today. I got one device. I got one tank. It's the Zeus um, sub ohm tank and the new Aegis. Um, it's basically the legend, but it's really light. It floats. Hmm. Um, pretty cool. And that oh, one, I got the, Zeus yeah. is a great tank. Is it still Zeus shockproof? Yeah, it's still shockproof, waterproof, dustproof, all that stuff. It's just uh, they've changed the metals that it's made of. It's aluminum, so yeah. it's really light. That's interesting. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it's an awesome little device. Literally, that's all I've been vaping on all morning, except for the thing I reviewed, which was prep. So, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> which was oh, no bueno. To figure out what that is, tune in tomorrow. <laughs> foreshadowing. I love foreshadowing. It makes me so happy. It's all about marketing, baby. Right. Absolutely. So actually, since we just did the little uh, buffet thing, I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, the Adept Slide combo because I hear absolutely nothing but stellar things about, number one, the Slide Tank, which has been, a, been around for a little while. You guys have had a couple of annotations of that. And it's yeah. basically like the best pre-made coil sub, or not sub, um, mouth-to-lung tank available as far as I've heard. Uh, and the Adept seems to be a perfect match with it, considering the, the battery life, you know, is probably just so, unbelievable. So maybe you want to... Yeah, just to preface that, the, the idea with the entire platform series of products, which is an umbrella under Inikin, uh, was th that we create various options for beginners, smokers, and those that enjoy the mouth-to-lung style of vaping, even one coil across the entire platform. Beautiful. Because God, that's amazing. It makes vapors more upset than a smoke coming up with a new tank that they have to buy all new coils for, right? Every time. So we try to make it easy for the consumer. We also try to make it easy for the shops so they don't have to stock a bunch of coils and just kind of get stuck on the shelf and they don't sell them and also the distributors as well. So it started with the Zenith and then we created the Slide as an alternative to the Zenith. Not going anywhere, Zenith 2 is coming in October. Nice. Uh, but, the, but the Slide is just an alternative to the Zenith that you can remove the glass. On the Zenith, you couldn't remove the glass and something that some of the advanced vapors wanted. No smoker gives a shit about it. No. But, but so we created this slide, which takes exactly the same coils. And it's been, it's been a fun ride. The, the ad dip, the idea behind it, even though it's an Inikin product, the, the idea behind it was Inikin had the idea to create kind of like the MVP of the back days. I mean, having something with a big battery life, mm -hmm. uh, bring it up to speed with the requirements, just like we heard dustproof, shockproof, and waterproof, which is all the work that, that, that uh, Inikin did. What we put our input in is, um, is a user interface. It's something that we did with the Proton as well, too. The Proton is not our device, but we gave a lot of work with, with the way that you navigate the menu. We're trying to make it as easy as possible, even for an advanced device. So the idea for the ad dip was, Somebody that's new, that doesn't know what an ohm is, what a volt is, what wattage is, they can take all the coils from our line, screw it on the tank. The device will recognize what coil it is automatically and then give you a range of wattages based on a bar system. So it's basically like a volume and, you know, fills a DJ. So the idea came from, you know, you raise the volume if you want it a little bit louder or warmer, and then you lower the volume if you want it cooler, right, or quieter. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, if you're selling this at a vape shop or if you're an advanced vaper, you know, I know a lot of advanced vapors want to help, you know, smokers, but, you know, if you do it, I've, I've helped over a thousand people quit smoking. After a while, it's like, oh, fuck, I got to go through this. Thing. So an ohm yeah. is this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So through all that, you say, here's a tank, here's a device. It's going to last you two days. Put your liquid inside. You want a little bit warmer, crank it up. You want a little bit, let's bring it down. You don't have to tell them anything about numbers, which I think is very, very important. Absolutely. Also, people that are pod users, right? If you take a pod user, I've seen this happen in vape shops and this really pisses me off. Somebody comes in with a jewel and we, and we want to help them try something else and we give them an Aegis Legend, right? <laughs> Which has a very complex screen, very yeah. complex menu and all that. And they look at it and they're like, oh, I don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah, it's just, just too much. I, you know, a jewel, I just I pop it in. You go, it. Yeah, you go from something this big you can fit in your pocket to something right. the size of a cinder block. Right, right. With a very, very extensive menu that needs at least an hour of explaining. And, Absolutely. you know, the people have lost interest at that point. So if somebody wants to move up from a pod but doesn't want to have a complicated device, 
Uh, this is what the ad deck was designed. We're also making it in a version of a tube as well. So it'll be a tube version of the ad deck. Oh, where nice. As soon as you screw yeah. it, it won't be as, as that much of a range, but as soon as you screw on, it'll automatically detect if it's below one ohm or one ohm, and it's going to give you the right uh, wattage automatically. It's going nice. to get that automatically. So it's going to be just an easy tube system you can give to somebody to start uh, to start vaping. So mm. that, that was the concept behind the ad deck, is like how do we make something real-time use easy affordable for people to that want to step up from a pod system or want to start vaping or even for the experience listen you know i'm old man i got, <laughs> I, got I travel so much i don't have time to charge my shit all the time you know i never can't carry batteries i fly so much so having devices like this that can last me one or two days are it's great for people that are on the go for people that are working um it, the most important part of vaping is not running out of juice yeah. it's like like it's like having a cigarette without a lighter right yep so so even for experienced mtlers or people that like to vape in those wattage ranges which is between 11 and 17 right it's not like it's a great range if you mm -hmm. like to vape in between there depending on on uh, on your style then it's a, it's a really good device i've really really enjoyed using it and uh and so far the feedback's been really really good absolutely yeah i mean I, like i said i've heard nothing but good things but the sound of that 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 tube style mod sounds sounds really rad yeah, because again, very, very simple 3,000 mod battery. It's going to yeah. last you a few days. It'll last you yeah. forever, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's good for people. You know, like, obviously, you see, I, I, I enjoy myself a good mech mod or whatever. But sure. I, and it, and it, a lot of it is really the form factor of it is just something that I really enjoy. And, and it's like, like for my dad, right? I, I put him through so many devices to finally get him to quit smoking, right? And uh, if, if something like what you're talking about, I think would be like the end game perfect for him. You know, the, the biggest complaint I get from people that are starting to vape is it's too difficult, especially older. So we have to think we have to break out of our demographic that we are on here constantly on mm -hmm. social media like that. But the people that really need to quit smoking, nothing against you, young lads, your early 20s. Again, <laughs> I want you to quit smoking as well, too. But it's so easier for you guys because you've been in the technology age since you were born. Yeah. For somebody that's 40, 50, 60 years old, right? Those people have been smoking for 30 years. They they need to quit today, right? Because because their health is, is is more important at that stage than it is for us. How do we make those people not go buy a jewel and and still be part of this this community and enjoy vaping as well too? This is something that we always forget. Mm -hmm. I fucking love vaping. Yes, sir. I, Hallelujah. It's enjoyable to me. It's not a task. Jewel has made it a a, a task, right? It's it, to me, vaping is not a task. It's something that I find pleasure in. How do we get those people to experience pleasure the way that we understand pleasure? And that is for them to have the variety of coils and the variety of liquids. They can use whatever they want to. They're not stuck on one system. They're not making it work to vape. They're vaping because it's working for them. Exactly. And they enjoy it. So we need to bring that, that enjoyment back into vaping like we all discovered it from the beginning. And that's my goal with Feel is to bring that pleasure um, the, the, the pleasure principle, if you want to yeah. call it, back to vaping uh, and break out a little bit. I, I, I do this little presentation with Phil called Back to Basics. And one of the tricks that we have in that presentation is to get a Juul user to switch. You don't have to, you don't, you, you're never going to get a Juul user to switch by telling them, buy this. It's never going to happen. Never. never. For those of you that work at vape shops, it's not going to happen. But if you fill up an EQ, with 20 milligram mango from another, because let me tell you something, Jewel flavors suck. I'm sorry. I'm a connoisseur. I just think that the Oh, they're bad. Works. No, they're bad. They're, they're not. There's yeah. way better mangoes on the market. Oh, yeah. So imagine putting a 20 milligram mango in an EQ mm -hmm. and giving it to somebody to try and just say, hey, I just got this in. Try it. Tell me what you think. Don't try to sell it to them. Just let them try it. And then yeah. if they start using it and they're enjoying it, you're like, boom. Now, you're not stuck on that little pod. You can choose from all these flavors. The whole the whole world opens up. Right, right, yep. right. It's more enjoyable, and it's it's lower. Nick, imagine this is twenty, not fifty. And you fifty. Get the same satisfaction. Oh, and by the way, guess what? If you switch to this, you're gonna save half the money you're spending on jewel right now. Yeah. So there's your your you kind of your entrance way into the. To it's to it's it. your it's your elevator speech. You got to yes. have that thirty second elevator speech that's gonna catch them right. and it's gonna keep them. You know what I mean? Right. And you got to have it down, you know? And that's that, that's the best because if you if you have to ramble on and on and on like and and you're and you're all over the place, you're going to lose that person and that's what happens a lot in vape shops. If if you can get the person behind the counter to even talk to you, they generally just ramble on and don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know what I mean? And that's the problem with 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 that demographic of people that that and you know I'm not saying all vape because I have a I have a fantastic fucking vape shop, you know, that's my home shop. 
But, you know, it, you see it too much where there's just some kid that doesn't know what he's talking about and he doesn't want to talk to nobody and he's putting you in the wrong device, you know, and, and that's, that's the front lines for getting people to fucking save their own lives, you know? And yeah. listen, if you're using a jewel full time and you're not smoking, more power to you. There's nothing, if that's what you enjoy to do, I'm not criticizing that at all. Uh, what I am saying is that for these vape shops to stay alive, you're not going to stay alive selling jewel pods. No, Period. absolutely not. You're going to be out of business. You're going to be back at Starbucks making coffee for eight bucks an hour. That's a, that's a 7 Eleven industry. Jewel is a 7 Eleven industry. It's not a vape shop industry. It's not a vape shop industry. No, vape shop is a specialized shop. It's like uh, I try to compare it sometimes to the automobile industry, right? You want you want a tuner shop, you're going to go get your car tuner. You go to the car dealership, you're going to buy the car as it comes off the lot with all the safety and precautions. We need to go back to that principle of helping people quit smoking and, and providing the nicotine specialists that work in those stores. They need to be trained, they need to be educated, they need to have continuing education. You went to New Jersey to Good Guy Vapes. These guys have 45 stores, some of the most professional people I've ever met in this industry. Continuous education every three months to their employees uh, about products, about nicotine options, about how to handle the customers. That's huge. This is the stuff that vape shops should be doing today yeah. and not dependent on the 20 year old employee yeah. that's telling its boss based on what they saw on Instagram what to buy for their shop. Because this is the detriment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and continue, continued education is a huge thing because the, how fast this industry moves and how different everything is last month compared to this month. That's a huge thing, man. You can't just get stuck in your, in your wheelhouse. Like, Hey, I like to use this thing. I've been using it for three months. I'm not going to learn about all the new stuff that came out. No, man, you, you better get on that shit. If you're going to be working in one of them shops, the vapors needs change weekly. Guess what? Who doesn't change? The smoker has been the same for fucking a hundred years. It's a goddamn the fact. The smoker has not changed at all. The needs of the vapors change whatever the hot flavor of the, of the week is, or whether it's device liquid or whatever other, you know, gadget comes out, but the needs of the smoker have not changed, but we're, we're taking the products that we've adjusted for the vapors and trying to shove them down the throats of smokers. And it's just not working. And in my opinion, between 2016 and 2018, which is one of the biggest, I think bad periods of vaping was the golden era at the beginning of 2016. Yeah. We're selling 30 mil bottles for $22 all day, mm. making tons of money. And then the downhill started after that. So yeah. I think that we need to go back to what we're doing in the early days and try to draw more smoke into our shops. Whatever. Can I offer a little uh, a, a little piece of positivity in the, in the negative field industry at the moment? <laughs> uh, I work in a uh, a bar during the day, which is a, a coffee house, and uh, there's quite often I get in the morning and it's the the mess from the 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 rowdy night before cigarette butts everywhere, you know, and, and the clean up from that. But what I am discovering on the floor is pods and oh, random really? pods around the, the venue. You know, this is a, a pretty young, young, young person's bar. And now I'm discovering uh, these on the floor discarded, you know, so the, the youth here in Australia are getting into vaping, which is always, it makes me smile. I mean, it's trash on the ground and it's stuff. <laughs> you got to clean it up. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but it's like, wow, you know, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a really strange thing to see because I'm like, what is that? Wow, that's a pod. You know, like, what's that doing on the ground? That's, right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's yeah. nice to see. I think I think a lot of the younger generation, it it, bo it bothers me when I see tobacco free kids and and pave and some of these other groups bash the industry and bash kids for using vapor products. I, I wrote an op-ed in, in the newspaper here that drew a lot of attention. I write an op-ed every month here through my Tennessee Speaker Association and my PR firm. And in one of my op-eds, I, I was interviewed on this, this jewel epidemic. And I said, the people that are writing the laws are dumb. Young kids are smart. They realize that this product is less harmful than cigarettes and they're gravitating to it. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't take it out on kids, no, really. No. We're not. We should take it out to the people that are not enforcing the law and selling these products to these kids. But the kids themselves are making a conscious decision because they understand that this product is less harmful than traditional combustible tobacco. And at the end of the day, if vaping was not around, they would start smoking. Absolutely. Plain and simple. This is data, FDA data from CDC.gov. Mm -hmm. The average smoker in the United States starts at the age of 13. So no matter what you've done for tobacco control all these years, it has not fucking worked. Nothing has worked. Kids still start smoking at a young age. It's always been the demographic at a young age because you're going to experiment. The only difference with that product is that a cigarette, you take your first puff, you cough, your second puff, you cough, the third puff, you're an addicted smoker. Yep, you're done. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. And that makes the best sense because even here when uh, we had our legislation here in Las Vegas for passing the tax that would deter kids from vaping and all that stuff, 
they brought up that they weren't making enough money because of the tobacco grant settlement. So they said that so many people stopped smoking that they weren't creating enough tax money that they had to tax us. The master settlement yeah, agreement. Plain and simple. Yeah. And it's it's all about money. It's it's a bunch of bullshit. Sure, sure. It, it is all about money. And and unfortunately, we as an industry, and it, it and keep in mind, we're a baby industry. I'm, I'm trying not to put too much weight on us as well. Mm -hmm. too. I don't want to say like I'm really critical of it. We've made a lot of major mistakes. But we're still, if you think about it, a baby industry, yep. 10 years max here in the United States, I would say more like seven years we've been to the level that we are now. Mm -hmm. right? It feels like it's 100 years for me, but but it's still only 10, 10 short years that this industry has sprouted here in the United States. But the key for us would have been to reach out to the groups like the American Lung Association, yep. American Cancer, Cancer Society, at an early stage and fund them. Uh, Aaron Bieber, and I, again, I'm not going to get into drama about this this entire thing. Whatever your opinion is, it's fine. Exactly. Uh, but in 2014, I was in Tampa Bay with Aaron Bieber. We're sitting at a bar having drinks, and I just came up to him and I said, Aaron, I have this crazy idea. What if we go to the American Lung Association and give him $5 million and 100,000 bottles of liquid and 20,000 starter kits and tell him, listen, we'll give you $5 million every year but the only thing that we want you to say is try patches, try gum, mm -hmm. try Chantix, try my mom's needles, try yep. in injecting nicotine up your ass. If all that <laughs> failed, give it another option, then that's vaping. Absolutely. You know, it would have been, been huge if we would have done it back then. But who do you get in 2014? It's too late. People were making all this money and they're buying fucking Lamborghinis and they're yeah. sponsoring summits for $250,000 to be at a vape show. Uh, yeah people to put the money on. I know. And so that's exactly idea that always needs funding. Everything that's a great idea needs funding and nobody's willing to step up. Yeah, that's exactly what 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 you know when you were talking about it it's a young industry. And that's something I've always said over and over and over. It's like you you can come down hard on some of these companies that are, you know, that they're not doing it right, but you got to understand the all these people are kids running these companies. They're new money, they've never had anything. All of a sudden their liquid line blew up. And they're just like, hey, I'm making money. You know, it's hard to get to a 28-year-old a CEO and explain to him, hey, man, you're fucking up the program here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's hard to explain that to somebody that age. You're absolutely right. And listen, some of them deserve it, whatever. A lot of them deserve it, but some of them, you know, they're just kids yeah. being fucking kids. Yeah. And some, some of them deserve it. But at the end of the day, it boils down to what you said. It's, it came in fast, and, and a lot of them got caught up into market the lifestyle because yeah. marketing is what sells this industry unfortunately i'm a bad marketer i tell this to phil all the time if there's one thing that me and phil don't do very well is marketing we just we just suck at it there's people that are great at it and 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 marketing took over the majority of their time and they forgot about the bigger pictures like how do we sustain this um but it, but but like you said you can't put all the blame but at some point you have to look at yourself and you have to look at the industry and look and learn from our mistakes not repeat them Right. So I'm, I'm a big uh, I, I'm, I love history. And Absolutely. I'm really infatuated with mafia and, and like, you know, uh, Pablo Escobar. I've done so much research. I'm, I, you know, when I get OCD on something. That's because like, you that's because you were gangster, Demi. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, one, it's one thing that I learned from him is like history learns to repeat himself. We have to be able to look at our mistakes. And in order to compete with now a huge competitor, which is big tobacco and mm. also pharmaceutical, which is our biggest competitor and the financial interests of the government, we have to act like big boys. The yep. time of us acting immature and, and, uh, and saying that, oh, we're better than smoking, so you should leave us alone. That's, oh, it's done. It's over. It's over. It's been, it's been over. The moral argument's over, and now it's about money. Yeah. Yeah, it's always about money. Absolutely. It's, and, and, but we made a lot of money in this industry. So we, hmm. we, we might not have made enough as the big guys, but we have enough money to make influence. We just, we, no. we spend need, it wrong. We, we, we need we, to allocate that money in places that it's going to actually affect right. some change. Right. And, and nothing that we've spent money on. Has nothing, made, nothing. Change. And we, we've given money to every Tom, Dick and Harry that's coming along with this industry. <laughs> gonna, we're going to save, we're going to save you. I see more groups popping up now says, give us money. We're going to save you. Yeah. But the fact is that May 2020, you need to submit a PMTA. Nobody yeah. have like it. And listen, I'll be the first one to tell you. My group from China put $100,000 in the first right to be smoke free uh, lawsuit. We were the largest donor. Mm -hmm. I don't get no credit for it. Nobody talks about it. Uh, to, uh, we followed up with $25,000 from Sevia and $40,000 from the Tennessee Smoke Free Association to sue the FDA. Absolutely. But we 
lost in court. I mean, if we can get to the Supreme Court, I think that we have a chance. But that will take five years for us to get there if we get there. And depending on, you know, who the president is, the Supreme Court's going to be at the time. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? <laughs> we tried all the avenues. We tried Congress with Cole Bishop. That didn't work. Yep. We tried the lawsuits. We tried everything. Nothing has worked because it's simply a system that was designed around protecting big companies and putting all the small, you know, vaping started with us. Yeah. Us. Mm. Everybody that's here, more so me and Phil that are like kind of godfathers. We've been in this since day one trying to help people. As a matter of fact, can, can you, I, maybe there's some people that don't know exactly your guys' kind of origin. Could you maybe get into how you guys met and how you guys started like making the whole, the whole bromance right. situation? But, Right. So Phil started uh, uh, vaping and reviewing in 2009, and I started vaping in the, at the end of the 2009, uh, beginning of 2010, and I started reviewing uh, probably midway. Uh, I mean, there was there was only like five reviewers at the time, right? Oh, yeah. So Back in the day. Phil, Nick, uh, I get you 69. Yep. And the guy with the fedora. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. Um... Michael, you, the Ulysses, I don't remember what his name was. Ah, damn it. Like five people out there yeah, reviewing. I can't remember. And the reason why I reviewed is, that, is because I, I, I was at that age. I was 40, 39 at the time. I was at that age where there's not really a lot of YouTube reviewers my age that had quit with vaping. So I was trying to make a, like a channel that's going to cater to like the 40-year-olds that might necessarily don't want to listen to cunt, fuck, shit, piss every second, third word. <laughs> So, so, Are you I, talking I, about I, me, dickhead? I'm not. I'm not a prude. I'm just saying, <laughs> I wanted, wanted to cater to those people to help me quit smoking. So I started reviewing back then, and then all of a sudden I get this message on Facebook, and it's Phil, and he's like, "Hey, somebody told me to check out your channel. It looks like we vape kind of like the same. I want to introduce myself, blah blah blah." And we started talking, and it just after message after message, we were just, you know, similar backgrounds. Yeah. He's Italian, I'm Greek, similar family values, how we grew up. We, we use the same deodorant. I mean, I'm not making this shit up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we, that we, we just blended really, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we met up at the first uh, vape bash in Chicago in 2012. And we, be, we became, you know, very good friends ever since the, the split happened in 2013, not split between us, but where I split off is, I, I started to realize at a young at my young vaping career that this product is so good that the government's going to come after it. Yep. In fact, if you go, you know, I've been doing podcasts for seven years. I don't know if a lot of people realize wow. that, but mm -hmm. but you can go. All my stuff is still up there. The vape team on VP Live Network, and then Smoke Free Radio on VP Live Network, and then Smoke Free Radio that's on on the Smoke Free Radio Network. I'll page put now. I'll put links in the thing yeah. after. But, but I started doing podcasts a long time ago, and my goal of doing that in the vape team show back on YouTube at the time was to bring awareness to the consumer that, hey, listen, bans are going to happen. Laws are going to come. We're trying to get people educated. A lot of people laughed at me at the time. They're like, oh, nobody's going to bother this product. This is great. It's going to help millions of people quit smoking, which is exactly what the government does not want you to do. Puppy, puppy dogs and rainbows. Right. The world ain't that way. So I fell very quickly into an advocacy role. I became obsessed, just like with Mafia. I became obsessed. I started reading and educating myself and reading law and, and doing science projects and it helped Dr. F launch in 2012 his, his first study that he did in, in vaping. Yep. Dr. Dr. Farsalinos, for anybody that doesn't know, he did the flavor. Uh, yeah, he studies. was on my show, the Smoker Show, this past Tuesday. Absolutely. If you want to check it out, a lot of great information. I'll put a link but, to that, too, in the bottom. But the, but the thing is that I realized very, very soon that we need to have more people talking about that and less about the next shiny thing. <laughs> By that time now, everybody and their mom started to become a reviewer. You know, it just started to you know, grow and grow and grow and grow. Uh, and then the sub-ohm phase, phase hit at early of 2015. And these tanks started coming out of China, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And I look at my desk at some point and I have like 15 sub-ohm tanks that all do the, the same shit. All of them. All of them. I call Phil up. I swear, I call Phil up and I was like, hey, Phil, it's just not fun for me anymore, man. I'm looking at these tanks, everything that's coming out of China, it, it was 0.5 was the, you know, the low resistance at the time. Everything is a 0.5, yep. you know, you put three milligram and you blow clouds and it's just <laughs> more. So I, I, you know, I had started my Tennessee Smoke Free Association in, in 2014. I started to travel a lot for conferences and meetings and stuff like that. So I kind of like broke away a little bit from the reviewing. I wasn't doing it as much as Phil and some of the other guys that continue to do it. So I kind of fell in the advocacy role, whether I wanted to or not, I kind of fell into that. I've spoken all over the world on e six from China to Germany, to Ireland, to Greece, um, France, um, Canada. I, I try to always 
push the message of harm reduction Absolutely. from a fair and balanced view as a user of the product, but also the responsibility and the ethics that comes along with that responsibility of pushing this product. You have to be fair and, and realize that there are some drawbacks, there are some negative things, but the main thing that I want out of my presentations for people to get is that this product can change the course of public health for the next 100 years. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic, yeah. And you, you've always been one of the best speakers that we have, I think, as far as, especially in a, in a, in a true-to-life public forum. A lot of people can talk on these shows or whatever, but I've seen, I've seen you speak in person, and it's, it's, it's rock it's and roll. It's, it's rock, dude, it's rock and roll, bro. <laughs> it's because I feel that way. I think a lot of people, um, I, it, I was in vacation in Crete this past summer, just a month ago. And, uh, and I, I was invited to go to a radio station there to talk about vaping. This lady does not vape or smoke or anything. So I was 45 minutes on the air with her on the radio station. And when we got done, she's like, wow, you're so passionate. Like I understood, I don't smoke or vape, but I understand that the government's trying to fuck our people. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's where I'm exactly what I'm trying to get, get at because that's the passion that we relay. Absolutely. And I, has that passion as well too there's a difference between an attorney like gregory Connolly. i love gregory Connolly. oh yeah very very smart guy he does, he does a great job talks, when he talks it's one tone hello i'm gregory Connolly from the american vaping association <laughs> I with 24 milligram watermelon e-liquid and I'm like, greg i've heard it 150 times <laughs> like, engage me do something but he wears, he wears very nice suits when he goes on tv you got to give I'm, him that I'm just busting, <laughs> i know <laughs> That passion, you got to be able to relate, but you also have to get accurate information as well, too. And I think that's it's missing a lot. Like we get a little bit closed minded and we don't kind of open up our eyes and, and present it in a way where politicians, legislators, public health officials can understand it. We can't tell them, no, stop. It doesn't work with it. It's about chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, changing this whole ideology that exists in the, in the United States about, about vaping and what exactly vaping is. And you know, I can't blame him. I mean, I can't blame a 70 year old politician that went through tobacco control back in the 80s that saw the tobacco companies manipulate the system. Absolutely. And, you know, think and say, oh, oh, this is just the tobacco companies coming, just doing what they did. I can't blame him for saying yeah. that. But what I can do is I can sit with him once, twice, three times with his staff. The staffers are usually younger people that know what vaping is. Some of them do vape. I can sit there and chip away and chip away, just like we did here with Senator Lamar Alexander. At the beginning, he never wanted to talk to us in 2015 in our first meeting until 2017 where his main staff would change, the young girl, 34 years old, her boyfriend quit smoking with vaping. Next thing you know, some, uh, you know Senator Alexander is on our side. So it just yeah. takes time. It might not happen in one day, a week, a year, or even three years, yeah. but you have to chip away and explain and always present factual information. What's unfortunate and, too and, is, at, at, well, I'm sorry, Chris, I'll get just no, one second. No, just to speak on that real fast, yeah. that's a thing too. Don't wait for your legislative se or le sorry, legislative season for when they're trying to pass a ban or a, a flavor or a tax. You need to be in contact with these guys all the time, especially if you're a part of the industry, because you need to let them know what benefits this does to the public besides them thinking, oh, it's just cigarette companies and stuff like that. Yeah. Because a lot of these people think that we're a part of Big Tobacco. That's exactly, oh, and that's exactly what happened when I was at the uh, Livermore flavor ban, right? So it, we went through and there was, you know, we had a few speakers, but they had, you know, they had, they had a ton of people because they paid people to come in or whatever. And what happened at the end of that, 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 that flavor ban hearing was, I mean, I've been to quite a few of those things. And, and this one was the worst I'd seen because it was literally the, the vaping is big tobacco narrative that was, that was in those council members' head. And that's all they drilled home. They didn't listen to anything we said. All they said, they just kept saying like they were, as if they were running for their, their public office at the time of this damn hearing. We won't let big tobacco into our schools. We won't let big tobacco into our town. We won't let big tobacco rain all over our parade. You know, and and it was it was it was insane. It was so maddening. It's terrible. And like he said, like you got to chip away at these people because like the person that proposed the bill when we went there to the meetings and stuff with like the you know the big boss of the company I work for and all that stuff. She left the room when we were trying to explain things. And it's like, okay, like you're not gonna get a warm reception right away. Don't let that deter you. Yeah. No, it's not gonna happen. This year, I you know, I go to I'll go to Nashville twice a year, not in legislative session. I just go with my lobbyists. We go and we knock on some doors. Hey, it's the vapor guys, just checking in, <laughs> saying hi. That's it. We just want to make it make sure we're aware, they're aware that we're here. Well, I've met with the Tennessee Department of Health three times. Three times. Listen, if we were big tobacco and they and, and Jewel and Big Tobacco asked them to meet and they declined them both. They met with us three times wow. this year. 
when I arranged my meeting, Jewel lobbyist here in Tennessee contacted me and wanted to come to the meeting with me. And I was like, there's no fucking way. Um, so, but when I walked in and I introduced myself, I, I introduced myself as Dimitri Grafiotis, executive director of Tennessee Smoke Free Association. Jewel is not a member of my association and I don't represent the interests of Jewel. Yeah. We're independent vape shop owners and manufacturers in the state of Tennessee that uh, occupy you know, a hundred membership with, with 500 employees, uh, the, the economic data that they want to hear. So it's, it's important to distance ourselves, but on the same token, there is some stuff that we can fight together with jewel and with big tobacco. There is some stuff that we can walk along the same. Absolutely. 100%. I agree with that. 100%. I've defeated the, the tobacco 21 here in Tennessee, three years in a row, including four bills this year. One of them brought by jewel mm -hmm. right in Tennessee this year, four bills came in. Yep. One of them was brought on by jewel. In the past, RJR, Philip Morris, National Tobacco all have helped me defeat to Tobacco 21. Mm -hmm. This year, everybody was against me and I still beat it. Everybody. I mean, because everybody flipped. Philip Morris flipped. They're supporting T21 now. RJ Reynolds kind of taking like, ah. But any company that takes that ah stance means that, you know, you, it's going to go for the other way, right? And, uh, and of course, Jewel, big proponent of Tobacco 21. They're trying to show that they're doing the right thing. Yeah. So, but, but, but we were able through our networking and our taking my shop owners, you know, when I put a call to action in Tennessee, this, I think this is the difference between my state and other states. When I put out a call to set to action here, I had 45 shop owners in Nashville with me. That's 45. gorgeous. That's gorgeous. That's that, amazing. That, That's amazing. That, that, that makes me stiff in my pantalones. I love the, I love the sound of that because. I can't, they step up. They, they step yeah, up. Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. I'm just saying that's amazing. We're the high, we have the highest concentration of distributors in this and the United States here in Nevada. Only two other companies showed up. Yeah. yeah it's ridiculous. It's, it's tough. Really it's hard. tough in California, man. I, you know, I've, I've been real lonely at a lot of those things, but I did have a couple things from the chat. Don't get, me, don't get me started on California. I know. I'm, I'm hey. going to give you a history lesson in, in California. Okay. Well, I'll, okay. All right. On the second ECC that happened in California, I think it was 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I met, I came out there. I had started the Tennessee Smoke Free Association. I came out there. I met with well, all the big guys at the time. Epic Juice. TJ the Vaping Monkey, a vape revolution. I mean, all the big guys, all the big guys, we had a meeting and I said, listen, California is the mecca of vaping. Mm -hmm. What I did in Tennessee, you need to do it here in California. You need to form a state association. And I get one lobbyist. You need to get four lobbyists. Yep. And have enough money here to create laws today to protect you tomorrow. Yeah. All the shop owners, Chuck, all it was like, yeah, fuck yeah, we're going to do it. Guess what? No. This is what happens. Fucking Coke, midgets, drinks, music. <laughs> and guess what? By Monday, everybody, everybody has, forgot about it. Like it's cool. Everybody forgot about it. And guess what? And then people like Stefan came along and drained the the, 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 the the state of money, you know, forming a state association on a lost cause because by the time that prop came, it was done. You lost the game. Yeah. You lost the game. And you know, time. that's 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 funny too, because I, do you remember? I think it was maybe maybe two years ago, and I and I, and I talked to you via DM about like Hey man, I'm fucking drowning here in this state, bro. I need your help. <laughs> you know, like give me some, give me some guidance. And you did, man. You know, you gave me a good, good little starting point yeah. to like start hitting up who I need I, to I hit wish, up and I do wish stuff. I would have started back then because California would be a completely different state yeah. if they had if they had spent some of that money that they were sp sp spending to sponsor ECC and the summits and all the shit yeah. shows that happened back then. Um, if they had taken that money and put in some heavy lobbying. It, 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 they wouldn't defeat all it, but at least they would have had a, some kind of a protection, meaning they could have set a law that would have bring some taxation into the state. At the time, it's going to benefit the industry and be legitimate and also protect you from what came because what came was devastating for the for the for the state of California. Absolutely. The tax that came uh, and all the all the restrictions and mm -hmm. all that. And again, I'm not trying to rehash or. or yeah, I know. I know. That, I do. I do have a couple things from the chat, though, that they, that you've been asked. Yeah, so let me let me yeah. read them off real quick. Son, Son of Liberty said said something real nice. And I know that's a friend of yours. Uh, yeah, you can, you can, he does a show on, uh, I on know. Radio. absolutely. And, uh, he says, you can talk to politicians before they introduce a bad bill. And that's absolutely correct. That's what Chris said. And that's, that's, yeah. that's 100% true, man. There's no reason why you can't just be hitting them up all the time. Be, be, be a little bit of a nuisance. Then they'll start listening. And then PSS has a question for you. It's, do you believe money can fight money? Let's suppose you had a hundred million dollars to support ad advocacy efforts. What, oh, what would you do with it? Uh, mainstream uh, uh, PR for um, uh, campaign. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. 
we're getting fucking raped on on mainstream public perception. Listen, we elected Trump. Do, do I have to say anything else? I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Nope. Anything else? We got we right? got we got reality yeah. show running the fucking country. Hundred million dollars. I guarantee you that every Tom, Dick, and Jerry in in in, in the United States would know that vaping is is less harmful. And, uh, and 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 by the way, back to what Patrick said. Yeah, talk to your elected officials first, but also hire a good lobbyist. That's very very important. Lobbyists, yeah. My work happens in the off season, where I do all my groundwork. My lobbyist represents Jack Daniels and American Express. They're big time lobbyists here in Tennessee. They go to these fundraisers and kids' birthday parties and fucking cocktail drinks, and they hear the chatter. Oh, you know, I know six months ahead of time that a bill is coming in Tennessee. Yep. So now I've already got my lobbyists already informed me. Now I can hit that district. You can get in front of it. You're being proactive, not reactive, which is our yeah, one of our proactive. hugest problems is being reactive so, instead of so getting out the, the money. Way. Back to the money. I, I worked with Brent Stafford and, and Matt from Suck My Mod for six months on a project to – to do a mainstream media campaign that would run nine weeks, uh, hitting 67 channels for a total of 5,900 commercials on mainstream television, including Fox News, wow. BET. Uh, we wanted to hit some of the own, some of the women's networks, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, we worked very, very hard, it, but it needs money. So we reached Lots out of money. to a couple of companies um that 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 we had potential to get this money and unfortunately it never became true and i'm not one of these people to say okay well we're going to do a crowdfunding right this just I, I, don't, I don't believe that a consumer needs to pay for what this industry needs to pay because listen, i smoke marlboros for 25 years marlboro not once asked me to donate two dollars so we can save smokers right, nope, right there was no go so, go fund me for rj reynolds right 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 so, <laughs> so i reached out to the industry and 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 I'm not disappointed. All I'm saying, and I'm not saying I have all the answers to everything. All I know is that we haven't done it. Yeah, no, right? I, agree. I know, agree. In order for me, because people tell me all the time, you should be on Joe Rogan. You should be on CNN to me. Because mm -hmm. just like you said earlier, you speak very whatever. I take it as a compliment. I'm very, very humbled. What do you think? I'm just going to pick up the phone and tell Don Lemons, hey, put me on CNN. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. You buy ad space, and once you buy ad space, you create this network and this relationship. When next time vaping is brought up, they're going to look at their list and going to say, oh, yeah, tobacco-free kids, they spent you know, $100 million yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. uh, who's this? This group, whatever you're going to call it, this group is an advertiser. Let's bring them and let's have a, you know opposing opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debate. Put me on TV with any of these motherfuckers. I'll crush them. I know this. I speak with data. I, I'm so well... Yeah, I can respond to everything that they're going to throw. It's a money issue thing. Sorry. But it's a money thing. Yeah. Because if you don't have the money, they don't think that you really care about it. You're not putting yeah. enough effort in. Right. I mean, they look at us as amateurs and they think they can crush us. Exactly. And they are crushing us. Absolutely. 100%. Can I uh, can I change tack for a second? Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, Hall of Vape, Dimitri. Uh, was that the place uh, essentially where Inikin was offering to what you were talking about before uh, with starter kits for smokers if they came to the show? So me and Phil started the Smoker Show last year in an attempt to – there's tons of vape shows on YouTube. I mean, we're doing one right now, right? There's, there's a couple. Of, there's a couple. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I talked about Phil, and I was like, if we do a vape show, you know, vapors are going to come. You know, I don't – you know, vapors have plenty of shows to do. Let's do something that's going to be toned down, understandable, talking about basics to bring smokers in. And that's why we call it the Smoker Show. It's an amazing show. Some papers bitched about that, like, oh, you're not a smoker. Why are you calling it the Smoker Show? Well, I don't want to watch it. You know, I want smokers to watch right. it. And yeah. why would a smoker go to a vape show if they don't know what vaping is? But they might be attracted if they see on YouTube the Smoker Show. Yeah. So we started that last year. And, you know, we have some sponsors for the show, which is fantastic. And, uh, and uh, a few of the here, and this is really funny. Nobody in the U.S. has asked us to do this. But a lot, a lot of European shows reached out to us. The first one was Ira with Hall of Eight. And he says, I have an idea. We need to bring smokers back to these expos, right? Because it's always vapors. People just don't convert at expos. What do you think we do a smoker show live here at the Hall of Eight? Nice. And I said, Ira, that's fantastic. Great idea. But we need to organize it correctly. We can't just, just show up and give kits because that's stupid. There's, no, there's nothing worse than a poorly organized. That doesn't work. Yeah, it's a fiasco when, when you don't have it completely ready to go. So our sponsors at the time, Inikin, Joytech, Five Ponds Naked, um, a few other liquid companies, um, gave us product. We went to the Hall of Ape. We set up a, a big uh, booth that, that Ira had donated for us, right? So we had the smoker show there. We had four tables up front set up. We reached out to the German community, vaping community, with German YouTube reviewers. 
and German just passionate vapors to volunteer their time and come and help us. And what Ira did was the most brilliant thing ever. He went and made lighters, lighters that say, <laughs> every time that you light the cigarette, if you're thinking about quitting, come to the Hall of Vape. And oh, wow. It's in your face. That's Pass rad, out. bro. Pass That's so out. rad. Passed them out of bars. And what we did is we had these people sign up ahead of time. Wow. So just don't open it up and somebody brings some guy and says, oh, I'm a smoker just to get a free kit, whatever. We had them set up ahead of time. So we had them actually spaced out eight smokers every hour. That way we can sit down for 30 minutes with them, not only give them a kit and liquid, find the right device for them, the right nicotine content for them, but we also can talk to them about what vaping is, give them some literature, give them some links to follow. And also what we did is we took them for 10, 15 minutes around the show to kind of break them in. Because you can imagine, if my mm. wife, which is 46 years old, walks into a vape show. It's a lot. In world, she's like, fuck this shit. I'm out. It's a lot. Like five minutes. It's right? a lot. Yeah. We, we, try to, we try to tell them that you know, this might look like it's a little cartoony. Don't worry about that. It's, you know, all fun games. They're, this is more for the advantage. So we try to break them into the show so they feel comfortable. We gave them shirts that said, smoke a show on them. That way, if they went to a booth and the people saw them, they yeah. would know that it's a new, a, a new person. So you don't talk to them like you talk to an advanced vapor, like, hey, bro, come try my cheesecake right. or whatever. <laughs> talk to them a little bit. You know, so it, and it, overall, it was done it, just very tasteful. And we, we converted, I think, 70 people at the Hall of Vape. That's in beautiful. So we gave kids. Amazing. We got their emails so we can follow up with them. And Outstanding. Them working with him and all that. And, and I think this is the right way to do it. You know, we're doing it at the Vape Jam in London in April. Uh, Amir and Maria have just been really coming after us. We, they wanted to do it this year. We were in China when it happened this year, but we promised them we'll do it again next year. So a couple of the European shows already. Hall of Vape, obviously, we're going to do it again. Have already signed up to do it. And nothing against the efforts that are happening here in the United States. But what happens, somebody comes in and gives you a pack of cigarettes, you can give them a kit, and they just walk off. 99% mm -hmm. of the time, they're going to fail. Yep, absolutely. You need support. It's like an alcoholic. Yep. You need to have that support. You yeah. can't just hand somebody a kit and say, hey, here, you're going to quit smoking. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. That's 100%. Yeah. Can, can I also ask a follow-up question? Has there been any, like... Uh, you know, repercussion from the, the the answers saying, you know, you were, you know, bringing people into this industry, you know, or like trying to lure, uh, you know, new customers, you know. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, in Germany, yeah. it was very, very well received. Obviously, everybody was screened. They were an adult. They were a smoker. Um, it, 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 a lot of work went into making this right. That's why we can't do a thousand people at these shows. Mm -hmm. If you want it to work, if, 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 if all we did is five, I swear yeah. to God. If all we did was five, and I know they quit smoking, it was well. I would I would fly to Africa for five yeah. people. If I yeah, know it's yeah. the intimacy of it, you need the intimacy. And all the German reviewers and the vapors were so passionate. I love them all so much. And people want to help. Genuinely want to. If I put the call out here in the United States, I guarantee you, thirty people will show up because there's people out there that are passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. When a smoker looks at the eyes of a consumer that's so passionate about vaping, they're like. Damn it, I'm gonna try this thing. If this guy tells me that he smoked for 20 years and he quit, I'm gonna put as much effort into this. I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna absorb, I'm gonna find the right device. We had we had EQs, we had cool fire mods, we had joy tech little box mods, we had AIOs, we wanted to find what's gonna fit their hand, where if it's a woman, if it's a man, where they work. We wanted to find the right content. We had it from three milligram all the way to 20 milligram because it's nice. 20 milligram is, is max. We had salts, we had regular nicotine. We try to find what works for them, but most importantly is to grab them by the hand and say, hey, sit down. Let me talk to you a little bit about vaping and let me show you what this is all about. And I think it's very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's yeah. quite often that conversation. Oh, sorry, Steve. Uh, that co that conversation is people that are like, oh, I'm unsure. And then there's other, other people that are like, I'm so glad I've got someone to talk to about it because none of my friends do it or I don't have a support network and I just want to ask questions, you know? Yeah. Uh, by the way, is Chris allowed to leave mid show? Like, do we tell no, he literally does this? <laughs> he literally does this every fucking time, and it drives me fucking crazy. So when he comes back, I want you to chastise his fucking ass because he'll listen to you. He's sick of hearing me yell at his ass. <laughs> Again, when it comes to smoking conversions, I'm so passionate about it. Uh, I, to me, even after all these years. 
uh, when somebody sends me a message and says, Hey, you know, I tried to see a tank and I quit smoking and I get him, we get him daily with feel. I made a few bucks and, and somebody quits me. It's, it's such an amazing feeling. It really is. Even today, I'm telling you, I'm just as passionate. That's why the Hall of Vape kind of reignited my passion for shows because I do a lot of shows. We do 20 shows a year minimum with feel all over the world. And it gets to the point where you go from Spain to Portugal to Germany. It's all the same shit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wake up in the morning. I don't even want to go in the event. It's just like, oh. I got to see the guy over there that's selling three milligram, but he's crushing three jewel pods a day. Yep. I got to see another douchebag. I know that entire team is smoking outside. I got to listen to the fucking zebra song all day. And I have to. Oh, listen God. To the music. music. Dude, the <laughs> fucking music alone, bro. The music alone is enough to drive a oh, normal God. person away. Oh. It's, it's, it's geared for fucking spring break. 21 year olds that are trying to take their top you off. Know, and I'm not a prude. Listen, if I'm at a strip club with Phil, just fucking blast that. Let's shit go, off, bro. I'm down. Let's I'm get down. it, bro. I just can't promote tobacco harm reduction in that setting. And I get it. It's a different, it's a different demographic. By the way, Chris, I didn't know we could just get up at the middle of the show and just leave and just well, I can tell you. Uh -huh. uh -huh. See, bro. See? So this is my thing. I leave at least once or twice during the show. Oh, but okay. if you get on the point and I am listening. Is okay. that the worst part about shows if you're an active person going to a show? You know, you're drinking beer, so you're going to pee a lot. So <laughs> next time that happens, please take a laptop with you in the bathroom. There you go. We want to see that shit. That's, that's $20 on my Patreon. I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's that, far that, that, cheaper than that. Thing. Far I'll, cheaper. I'll do a crowdfunding, right? A crowdfunding. <laughs> crowdfunding. <laughs> you go to these shows, though, as an average person, and you see all these, like, babes and this like, DJs and all this stuff. And these girls are the ones that are presenting these products or selling them. They don't know nothing. These girls are hired off Craigslist last no, week to show their tits to promote these products. No idea. Yeah. No idea. That's the worst. Yeah. No idea. It, it's funny because, um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a straight man. And nothing against. I've helped a lot of gay people quit smoking as well too. You are, um, a you are a beautiful straight man. Get it right. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy looking at a pair of tits just like the other. <laughs> um, but it's very hard to understand the demographic. If you're going to be an 18 to if you're going to be a, a, an 18 to 25 for white male, because this is what all the entire marketing and vaping is 18 to 25 white male, right? If you're going to be that kind of show, make sure you advertise it. But don't tell me that you're doing a show to attract smokers and to, to tobacco. Harm yeah. production. I'm just not fucking buying it. Yeah. In fact, I have suggested a long time ago, stop doing advocacy at fucking shows. It's the stupidest thing ever. You got somebody in the middle of the stage. Thank you. Grabbing a microphone. Why you got, you know, you, you got a guy with a t-shirt cannon and throwing glass bottles of fucking e-liquid in the air. It's like, what the fuck are we trying to accomplish with this? It's a fucking crack house. No one cares about you. It's right? a party for vaping. Cool. I'm down with that. That's Just cool. Try to sell it to me. Like don't, it's something don't, don't false advertise it as a fucking advocacy panel when it, when it's a shit show. In England three years ago, we stopped going to the Vape Jam, but we're going back. Because I always believe in giving seven, second chances. We stopped going to ECC as well, too. I know. Uh, and I'll be, Vin will, and CJ will both tell you, I, I, I blasted him back in the day on Smoke Free Radio. I, I know I, you I did. Them, I boycotted the summit. Not because I'm some special celebrity. It's just my, I'm not going to legitimize your event because you're inviting me to speak while this shit show is going on. <laughs> exactly. So we're going back again this year. They want us to, to speak on Vape Shop. So I said, okay, we'll give you another shot. But, you nice. know, if it's shitty, I will tell you it's shitty. Um, but three years ago, we're in London, and, and me and Phil were going to give a presentation. Uh, we had this whole thing set up. A lot of people came through to listen to Josh talk, and we got bumped. We got bumped for a vape babe contest. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not a real model, but you can put your hands on some juice. Cam Winnens, uh, she's with SVRF, but back oh, then she was with Time Bomb God. Papers. I love her. I mean, I love Cam. It's not, it's, not, it's not her fault. It's not. But Cam was holding a vape babe contest. And we got bummed. And the people were coming. And, and this is why I got upset. I didn't get upset with the organizers. I got upset with vapors are coming up to me and said, hey, uh, you know, I wanted to ask some questions. When are you guys going to talk? And I didn't know what to tell them. I couldn't find the organizers. Yeah. So we blasted him publicly. And, and, uh, <laughs> but, but we refused to go again. And then this year, they came to us and they're like, you're right. We lost direction. And you know what happened? All these shows started going. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you, seen, have you seen some of the numbers on the last few? Yeah. No, absolutely. I've seen it. Absolutely. But I get it. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not, I don't hold grudges. I, I, I love these people that I work with in the industry. And if you're legitimately telling me that you want to turn it around, I want to offer, if I'm going to come all the way to London, you know what I want to do? Give me the opportunity to sit down and talk to vape shop owners, employees, managers. Let me try to help them go back to the basics. Let's try to help grow the industry. Let me give you an incentive as a vape shop employee or an owner to come to the show. Yeah. 
I, like ECC is the same thing. If you're a vape shop owner, come and listen to me and feel, give our presentation for a couple hours, do a Q and a with us. Let us help you increase your profits and bring smokers back into your shops. If I'm going to do that in a show, I feel good about going and at least trying to contribute something, even if it's very, very small, even only five people leave from there and get something out of it. But if yeah. I'm not going to show and you bump me for babes, <laughs> you, better, you, you better send me a babe at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and even so, like, not to like, you know, like get too crazy about it, but I, I've, I've only been in this street for a couple of years. I stopped smoking for a couple of years. And the reason why I know a lot about what I follow with what you do is because the owner of my company, she was like, hey, you need to check this out so you know what the fuck you're talking about. Those aren't her words. Those are my words. But she said yeah. it in a more eloquent way. I know Erica. I've yeah. known Erica for a very, very yeah. long time. She's yeah. Very... Amazing person. And so, like, you know, you got to have these conscious people in the industry as well. And if companies aren't conscious, those are companies we need to stop supporting. Yeah. I and it's also very have... hard because our style of vaping like, you know, I mean, we're going to be at the Anakin booth as well, too. But so wait a minute. So wait a minute. You, you are going to ECC this year? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. We might see you. Me and, me and Phil are doing a presentation on the Back to Basics seminar. Right. On the day. And then we're going to hang out at the Anakin booth for the weekend. But even that's very hard for us because we're going into California with MTL. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's it's growing, though, man, everywhere. Well, I, it is growing. It is growing. The, the, rise of, the, the rise of 12 milligram straight nicotine e-liquid too is great and that's you championed that and i've been yeah, fucking but, dying for that for years but in california they called me and field dinosaur for vaping uh 12 milligram two years ago so you know what what I'm me i get it i still, <laughs> I still have some resentment about it because i've never veered off of that me and Phil have never veered off of that that goal of hey you need to have options for smokers out there and we did we did such an immediate turn we went from three milligram to 50. So we need, to, we need to balance things out. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with 50. All I'm saying is that there should be options for everybody. Yeah. To yeah. me, in today's devices, in, to, in today's devices, uh, meaning the technology has advanced so much, the, if you're a smoker, you can quit with 12 and 18 milligram in today's devices. You can. It's abs- if you want to quit, you can quit. Now, there are some extreme cases that 50 milligram, depending on the wattage and all that, can help people that are very, very heavy smokers. or for whatever. The, yeah, the, the early cravings. The if early we, cravings. Get three million people to quit in 2013 with an ego uh, C and a C4 with 24 milligram. We can do it with today's equipment with 12 and 18 milligram. That's all we've been saying all this time. And people have called us dinosaurs. People in this industry shunned us away. People in this industry turned their back on us. People that we help make a lot of money for turn their back on us because we didn't follow the sub ohm 036 crowd. I have nothing against that. It's just not what I do. Yeah. Now I'm seeing it come back. I'm happy on the inside, but I still feel a bit of resentment. I'm like, well, motherfuckers, where you been for the last two years? You, you know, need babes, man. Right? You gotta get them. You, you gotta get them titties out, Demi. <laughs> Why is this industry so quickly to forget about the? You know, if if you're gonna if you're gonna call me out on something, at least come back and apologize when you find out that you're wrong. Yeah. Because you're wrong about me. Yeah. It's not like I'm promoting 12 milligram to sell a Zenith tank. I was I was promoting 12 milligram before I was making the Zenith tank. I've been promoting 12 milligram all through my vape career. As long as long as I've been as as long as I've been paying attention to you, I've heard 12 milligram come out of your mouth, and that's been at least what seven seven years now, that's eight years. Design, <laughs> that's why me and Phil designed those tanks for 12 milligram because we use 12 milligram, and, and just some people still use this thing deter people from using what they use. We have people that we work with that still use 12 milligrams for years. You find from, what you from 2016 to 2018, who designed tanks? What tanks came on the market for 12 milligram? Except the Aspire Nautilus, which came out in 2014. Yeah, yeah. Tell me one tank, one fucking tank that came out between 2016 and 2018. You, you took mine. Right you took mine, None. damn it. You asshole. None. <laughs> None. Yeah. No tanks that came out between 2016 and 2018 for mouth lung. None. We were the first ones when we signed with Inakin. Uh, when we left Kangaroo, we went within again. We designed that tank for that for that crowd, and all of a sudden, twelve milligram fucking disappeared from the market. Right. Which is funny because eighty percent of our products are sold in Europe. Mm. Isn't that amazing. Like right. our, my whole country does not support the the, the the work that we do. Like we've sold almost a million and a half Zenith tanks. Eighty percent of them in Europe. In Europe, you go to Greece. Every third tank you're going to see a Zenith. People still buy into the mouth lung. 12 milligram vape shops are staying alive. They're selling two coils and a bottle of liquid every week, which is the bread and butter for vape shops. This is the formula to keep vaping, independent vaping alive. It's not 50 milligram pods and it's not three milligram to a smoker. That's so true. And that, that's I get fired perfect. up. I get fired up. Fuck it, I love it, man. Short memory. I fucking love it. Short memory. What me and Phil have been, we've been drugged. 
our names have been drugged to this industry. In 2016, there were flyers going around with my face and Phil's face on there saying that we're big tobacco, that were designed by Stefan Dyback, uh, right? Uh, it works for big tobacco. 10% works for big tobacco now, by the way. I just want to put that out I there. I don't know. Yeah. How quickly we forget. And it's 2019 and I'm still not paid, bitches. I'm still not big tobacco. <laughs> What, what do I have to do? I'm sitting here on a Monday night at 1030 at night speaking with the Tres Amigos. What else do you want me to do? I love it. And none of these motherfuckers have come out to apologize to me, uh, except Vaping Legion. Vaping Legion apologized to me. ST Vapes apologized to me. But other than that, nobody else, nobody else that drug my name created all this conspiracy theory that I was. There was actually a conspiracy out there that I was in bed with the FDA to make everything go to mouth to lung into pod systems. Wow. So let me, can you imagine, you imagine how stupid you have to be to even con conceive a notion like if I had that much power, would I be sitting here on a Monday night talking to you guys? Yes, you would. You would, guy, God damn it. Because you love me. Especially with a guy that gets up in the middle of the interview that to go. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it was you that instigated among you. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, too, I think, like, you don't get wrong, obviously you've been in the industry a lot longer than I have, but I do see, this is what I see from it, a lot of people get envious of what the message and things that you can produce, so anything that they can do to make you look bad, they will, and that's the worst part about this, is, like, a lot of people that are in the right next to you on your left or right will stab you in the back to look cool for a quick second. Absolutely, I get yeah. that. A lot of people yeah. try to step on our, a lot of reviewers try to step on our names when all this came out as well, too, because a lot of their channels were not known. So bringing up Dimitri and Phil was a big thing, creates controversy, creates views. We know how this works. We get it. I understand. It. And look, I'm still standing. I'm still here. I'm still happy. It's not going to change all, any of that. And my record speaks for myself. I'm 24 and no this year on legislation in Tennessee since 2014. Uh, Tell me how many people can claim that in the United States, right? Exactly. I've, I've, helped, I've helped form over 12 independent state associations in the United States. Uh, I, I've done a lot for this industry, but the most important thing for me is to help people quit smoking. And, and no matter what I do in this industry, professionally or volunteer, my hardest job is volunteering, unfortunately, the least paying job. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but no matter what I do in this industry, my ultimate goal is for this product to be available for smokers because I'm so passionate about it. I think it saved my life and I think it's extended my life and I think uh, I'm around for my kids at a healthier state that I am because of this product. So 100%, 100%. If I can make a few bucks with it as well too, great. And if I do get paid by Big Tobacco or if, if I do sell out at Big Tobacco, I'll come on this show and tell you, hey Chuck, I love you to death. But I'm getting on my private jet with cocaine and and, and, and I'm and I'm gonna carry your bags, dog, and we're gonna go. <laughs> yeah. no, you, can't, you can't do that yet because Steve and I need your help in Australia. That, that would be great. Well, we yeah. can, we'll we'll fly to Australia. I'll fly the plane. Hey, what's up, Dan Donahue? That's my that's my guy there from New Jersey. He owns Good Karma Vapors. Nice. Great. Shout Dan out to Dan Donahue. Donahue. He's a guy that's still passionate about helping convert his his mom, seventy years old. I met her. Seven, on a T18 with Inican T18 and unflavored. She doesn't like the flavor. Unflavored. Really? Just straight. Wow. Well, just straight VG, PG? VG, PG. To me, but look, this this is what we should be having on TV. Like if I if I had bought this this nine week period, Dan Donahue's mom would be one of the segments. Period. 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 Yeah. This is what we need to be showing out there and not not the, the image that we have. Absolutely. Okay, so so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually finally say something. Hey look! Exactly. Hey look! That <laughs> motherfucker's got a voice. Where did he come from? Shut the fuck up! I'm talking. <laughs> Dimitri, I, I just sorry for mispronouncing your name, but um, He's I Canadian. just want to say something. You said earlier that you want to um, you want to ensure that there's options, there's a variety out there, and I, I thoroughly agree with you. And your passion is exactly why I started doing what I do. I mean, just. Between you and me, I work full time at this, and I pay to do this. Mm -hmm. Like the battle, the books don't balance. I'm losing, yeah. but I, it's worth it for me because you know it's yes. here. I'm here to help people. That's my point. But uh, go back way back when I first started. I uh, I went online and we ordered a Nautilus Mini, a uh, pretty little Snow Wolf to go with it, mm -hmm. and a Kanger Tech something or other 0.5 coils yeah. and a bunch of liquid. Yeah, that's where we started. Tank. Probably a sub tank. The sub tank <laughs> yeah. or the pro tank? Uh, sub tank. Yeah. Sub tank mini. Actually. Yeah. So that's that's what we started with. So I had a little mouth lung setup and I had a, a little uh, sub ohm setup. And it was for me and my wife. Yeah. She immediately gravitated to the Nautilus. It was perfect. She couldn't touch the sub tank. It just it just annoyed the crap out of her. Yeah. Me, mm -hmm. 
same thing. I couldn't do the reverse. I couldn't touch the Nautilus. It really, it was too tight. It was restrictive. You it smoke weed, too- Steve? Brody? Do you I was. I, sorry? I, I'm a serious question. Do you smoke weed? Never. Well, I used to, but a little tiny bit. Don't like weed. <laughs> you don't have to lie. I'm saying, I, I think, no, 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 the reason why I bring it up, if you've hit a bong, it's easier for you to gravitate to the subum style of vaping. This is how subum came out, by the way. Direct lung compared to, direct lung compared to a cigarette draw. Lesson from the Filipinos out in California. You, if you gravitate to a bong, it's easier to gravitate to the subum style of vaping. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it as a deterrent. I'm not saying it as a deterrent. No. There are people that can convert with subum. Yeah. Don't get me no, wrong. No, this is my point. I mean, hold on for a sec. Just, just as you know, it's kind of the funniest thing you said because I am, I am amongst my my group, who are all potheads. I am the guy who says no. I don't like pot. I agree with I agree with it for other people, but not for me because it just it just bugs me. So I was never really a pothead, but Canadian I always was one of those guys. I took my cigarettes and I'd roll them to loosen them. Yeah. I liked I like I, I direct lunged cigarettes. Okay. So it worked for me. Crazy and, like said, in, 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 popu- in every million people, there's one crazy person. So <laughs> <laughs> I think your number's way off. It's got to be way higher than that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought you were a numbers guy, Demi. <laughs> that number's way. <laughs> there's a lot of crazy I people. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Vandal's, Vandal's one. Attack you or say you're wrong. My point is to say that you were right, that we need a wider range of options Absolutely. on both sides because there's two people in this house who went to either side. I totally right. agree with you, Steve. Yeah. Options are great, and there's nothing wrong with sub home style of vaping. What we want, what we want people to understand is balance. Balance exactly. the products that you have in your stores. Balance the way that vapors approach vaping when you're trying to talk about it with a smoker. Give them the options. Stores, stop having a flavor bar in your fucking stores and have an experience bar. Stop doing just testing on vapor. Have variety of setups from a pod to a restricted direct lung to a mouth to lung to a loose mouth to lung to have all those options set up so people can try the different styles of vaping and see what fits them. Because let me tell you something. One of my biggest pet peeves in the fucking world is you can go into a vape shop and they have everything set up in a Sobom system. Mm-hmm. Everything. everything. Right? All right. the testers. Every tester. My very first vape I bought was the smoke uh, concentrated weed. Years yeah. before it was legal here, whatever, and then years before you know I even vaped. I walked into the vape shop and like you know I was like, okay, cool, because they had the products I wanted because I looked them up online. I go in there and I'm like, all right, you know, I smoke cigarettes because I smoked cigarettes back then. And they're like, oh, try all this. And it was all a bunch of fucking tanks that were super open that were fucking killing my throat and doing all that stuff. And so there's not enough variety to play into the part towards somebody that might prefer something different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, D- yeah. Dimitri, you hit the nail on the head and that's exactly where I was going with this. I actually want to see exactly what you said. Vape stores, instead of having a ton of sub tanks <laughs> and trying to sell the latest, greatest kit that we just got 50 of in the back room, because the markup's really great. I want to see them actually have that range of experience, like you said, so that the person can be asked, well, how do you smoke? What do you like? What do you like about it? Well, I suggest this, but try them all. See what works for you. Right. I, uh, I live far away from anywhere, so I just ordered stuff online. I didn't have options. Sure. But people walk in and try 15 different things and figure out exactly what works for you. Absolutely. It's also the experience as well, too, because if I sit down and and, and I've, 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 this has happened to me multiple times, I go into a vape store and we're doing a tour <laughs> or whatever. And I sit down and I'll try, a, you know, a flavor that they have a bar. They're like, Oh, you got to try this. And I try it. And I'm like, Oh fuck, this is delicious. Can I have it in a 12? Uh, nope. Sorry. Sure. Can. Have it in a 12. And I was like, if, if I was a smoker and I bought a Zena tank, and then you tell me, I found a flavor that I really like, and you don't have it, that it works in my tank? Then you shouldn't have your bar set up like that. You should have it. These tanks work great with least liquids. These tanks work great with these liquids. You can't just put sub ohm tanks in a, in a vape bar and, and expect somebody that's going to buy a liquid. Oh, I like this. Can I buy this? And then they go home and they put it in a Zena tank and put it at 15 watts, and all their vaping is sucralose because you can't yeah, it's not, it's not. You, yeah, it's not yeah. actually vaporizing the liquid. This has happened to us. We were in... Um, we were in... Um, uh, Spain, somewhere in one of these shows, European. We try this orange marmalade with uh, with Phil. It was like a, a one of the best tasting liquids I've ever tried. Eighty watts on a some shitty sub home tank, and and, and and I was like, hey, this is great. He's like, oh, let me give you a sample. I was like, ah, well, you don't have it in twelve. He's like, oh, you know, it's a babe show. We don't have twelve. So, so 
<laughs> we'll make it for you. We'll make it for you and we'll send it to you. And God bless him. He's a really, really nice guy. I mean, I know he wants to get feel publicity, whatever. But but uh so he makes it at 12 and he sends it to us. Phil, you know, opens up his zenith, puts a new coil, puts it inside, tastes like shit. Yeah. No, that's that's that's, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Certain certain recipes need to be formulated for higher nicotine. Yeah. So that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. The variety and balance is key. We can't go um we, we can't just go one-sided. We have to be able to, yeah. I agree with you 100% on that. It's apply for everyone, and I'm not going to lie to you. Before I started this industry, when I first walked in that beef shop, like I was saying earlier, I thought they were all asshole and douchebags. Yeah. yeah. I used to make fun of people that beef until I started working in this industry. You know what I mean? It, it, it is what it is. It's a public, a public perception. Because I went in there, they didn't have something that was adjustable for different people that were coming in. It was one thing that this was cool, this is hot, you need this, and no, bro, I just wanted to try something different that might help me stop smoking. And I waited years later on to get into the company I'm with now that actually took the time to show me what I needed. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is uh, what, yeah. Well, this is why you, you're talking earlier about uh, expos and stuff. And it, it's been very obvious that, you know, they've become a hobbyist show. They're not for new people. They're not trade shows. They're not for businesses nope. except for going off to, to their fans and they're not for smokers. We need to kind of differentiate perhaps a new round of expos that is just for the purpose for, for, for smokers. Which has been tried and it always ends up turning into a it's carnival a shit show. It's a disaster. Yeah, really. every, it, it does, you know, and it's a great, it, it is a fantastic idea, Steve, but it's just like, we can't, we can't done, stop I'm stepping on our own dicks. I'm not a half-assed person. I'm not gonna accept with fuel to go because somebody wants to get publicity and act like you're, you're converting smokers. If you're yeah. going to do this, like in Greece, in Greece, we have a show September I, with my, my home country and I go every year. Uh, I have a business there as well too. So in Greece, we have the smoker show, uh, excuse me, we have the show September 20, 20th and 21st this year or 21st and 22nd. So the organizer saw me at the Hall of Ape in Germany and said, oh, I want to do this in Greece as well too. I think this is great. And uh, I said, well, I'll be in Greece in the summer. Come by the shop and we'll talk. So he comes by the shop and I said, you know, if we're going to do this, we, you got to do it right. You have to invest into it and not get the publicity and the marketing that you want out of it. But I'm not going to do it half-assed just to give you publicity. We have to do it right. And then he started, you know, bringing up like, oh, you know, you know, do this in the backdrop. And, uh, oh, and what if somebody comes and gets a free kit and it's not really a smoker? And I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm yeah. not doing it. Yeah. It, yeah. Doing it. You know what I'm going to do yeah. this year? I, I have a booth at the show, which is for my business. <laughs> For Inakin, right in the middle of the two booths, I'm going to put a smoker show booth right there in the middle. And everybody can come over there to my booth and do it right. Because I'm not going to do it half-assed with an organizer that simply wants to get on Facebook and say, oh, man, I had Phil and Demetri here and we converted six more. That, that's not what we're after. I actually want to see it happen correctly. And to do it correctly, you have to invest time. You have to have volunteers. You have to put some money into it. I mean, what Ira did, making sh he made the backdrop. It looked professional. It was right at the entrance of the show. That, that way people don't go in and see the circus inside before they get to the show. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, he did it right. He had shirts made. Uh, the volunteers got shirts as well, too. We gave them, you know, I mean, it's just that you have to make it right in order for it to work. And guess what? Those 60 people, if half of them became vapors, we have 30 new customers for your show next year. And the people that are vending in the show have 30 new fucking customers. And those 30 customers are going to tell another 10 people each in their circle that they quit smoking with vaping. And out of those 10, we might get another two next year that are going to come because, yay, I quit smoking at the Hall of Vape last year. You need to go this year and do the same thing. I mean, people don't think like yeah. the bigger there's, picture. There's no long-term thinking. Like no long-term thinking. No, mm. not at all. Anyway. It's fantastic Any though. Questions no. from the chat? I haven't been looking at the chat. I'm yeah, no, no. Here, let's to be ignored. let's uh, do uh, let's do everybody do some questions in the chat, right? And then we did just and uh, I want to give a big thank you to uh, everybody that 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 came over from Match Stream because that pushed us up over 150, and so we'll do oh. yeah we'll do the 150 giveaway tonight, which we weren't planning for another week, but you know I think maybe maybe we're clout riding on, on uh, Dimitri a little bit too, so that helps. Show my tits, can I get 200 or something like that? That's what I'm saying, bro. Hey, let's put, let's put that out there. They're delicious. They're, they're a good A cup right now. Dude, awesome. if, I, if, I get some, if I get some Greek nipple, I'll, I'll fucking, I'll create some goddamn accounts. Well, it's like they say, you got the small up here, you got the big back here, and it's all about that. Exactly. So yeah, if there's some uh, questions in the chat, throw them out there. 
And then yeah, do. And uh, I'm not gonna bring my camera. I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, but can you uh? <laughs> make... <laughs> but hey, we have the. We still have an M Turk RDA. Oh, no, we do actually. If okay. you didn't know the story, I'm not gonna get into it again. It's gonna take too long. Turk and we and I had this whole interaction to where he hooked us up with a bunch of stuff to give away. I was gonna give away one thing. He ended up trading us a <laughs> for the one thing. So we do have Turk RDAs and Turk caps. Since we hit 150 tonight, I guess we can give away one of the caps and one of the RDAs if we want to do two. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's... Turk's a cool dude. Man. Oh yeah, Mike's Mike's a great guy, and he 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 did. He really hooked us up, man. And you know, it, and just just like every, just like everybody else. It's on the old video. I went into it, but yeah. I mean, either way, amazing guy hooked us up. But I'll be right back. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, I want to give a shout out to all of our uh, supporters, sponsors, you know, uh, Local Vape, obviously use the code Amigos20, and we get nothing from that, that's just for you guys, we get nothing from any of this stuff, it's just, you know, we want to hook you guys up, Squid Industries, of course, my homeboy Eric Buss, he's, he's a great friend, and you know, he's, he's been real, uh, real cool and hooked us up with some stuff, the lovely and fabulous coil stylings of Mr. Breeze Tones. Thank you. That was that was good. I like. There it is. There's there's that one. I'm looking for questions. There was a couple of questions. I was, I was okay. going back in the show. Oh, good. I was I was filling space. Go ahead and get to those questions, I'm glad please. Somebody's doing some work on this show. I, I'm just trying to fill air, man. Because <laughs> yeah. fucking Chris took off again like an asshole. Asshole. I don't want to get my boobs out. You know that's what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> Yeah. Like Kathy, Kathy says, thanks to the emails, the chroma is unit that made me quit the smokes. To me, I mean, how can that not touch you? I don't care how much money you make in this industry. How can I not touch them with somebody? And I'm telling you, these messages come. A lot of these people, just because you don't see them on Instagram blowing clouds about MTL setup, there's a lot of people out there that vape like this, right? You just don't see it. My, my wife, my wife uses my products every morning, 12 milligrams. She doesn't smoke anymore. You're never going to see my wife, you know, doing tricks on Instagram. But, but how can I not touch you as a person, as a human? Where did we forget about? When, when did we, as, an, as a community, when did we forget about how touching it is when somebody says, you know, you influence my life and my health. That's beautiful. Right? It's, the greatest, yeah. it's the greatest feeling in the world. I feel like no better five thing, bucks man. in your laundry, man. It's a great feeling. <laughs> well, maybe, a little, maybe a little better than that. You got to go at least 20 bucks in a pocket if you're, if you're going to get that yeah, same feeling. You. Oh, I think yeah. it's also something That's to be true. said that people need to find the the like the strength to say that i remember when i said that to the person who introduced me to vaping and it was awkward af like but i had to tell that person because you know i, I was probably one of 300 that told that same person you know you've influenced my my situation but i was like how am i gonna live the rest of my life and not tell that person that what they've done for me you know Absolutely. it was a huge yeah. thing so, so you can't be afraid adam do you have a couple of those questions uh, I was trying to find Ravens, uh, but there's one here from Vapor's Odyssey. Uh, he's got a neighbor who's been trying to quit smoking. Uh, he gave them a pod system to try and he has shown no interest in doing it. Uh, any suggestions? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I truly believe when people uh, need a little bit uh, a more hit, an open system works very well. I would very highly suggest the Inakin uh, gem pen that just came out now. It's been designed with a perfect cigarette draw. No adjustments on it, no menus, anything. You open up the top, you put liquid inside. Very, very easy to fill. It's a nice. pen stop. It's smaller than the T18. I was suggesting the T18 is T18 one. is fucking legendary. Oh, oh, fucking no, legendary. legendary though. Legendary. But this is kind of like the next generation of going to something that is smaller, same battery, but smaller in overall diameter. Form factor. Right? The form factor. Yeah. The inexpensive as hell, it's like 20 bucks or whatever. You get that with some good 12, it, and it works really good with free base nicotine, which is something that we always have to do. When you do reviews, you have to make sure you put that out there because a lot it. of the systems are designed for salt nicotine. And I will never, I have an MTL disposable tank that's coming out that works with salt nicotine Ooh. and free base nicotine. So and I, everything that I do will, will work with 12 to 18 milligram regular free base uh, nicotine as well. Did, did you guys have uh, anything to do with the disposable, the new, the new sub on one that any can put out? Yeah. Well, we suggested that they put the slide, uh, slide, uh, top cap. And let me tell you something. It's a banging. Tank. Dude, I've heard that the vape quality off that thing is unbelievable. I'm still not sold on the idea of the, I mean, for someone like me, obviously I don't, I don't, there's no, there's, I'm not that market, but there are a lot of people that, that find that really appealing. Yeah. And I've heard nothing but, damn, dude, so, that thing rocks. Yeah, even though we do MTL, we do help Inakin with a lot of the designs of their products as well, too, whether it's, I sub them myself, but I like a restricted direct lung hit at 40 watts. That's the way I enjoy sub -oming. 
the Go Max is a great flavorful tank, but it needs 80 watts. Yeah. You know, you yeah. vape it at 60, but ultimately is for these, some of these liquids, you want a good 80. And I don't vape that high. It's too hot for me. Yeah. So, or else I'd be using it. Uh, plus some of the liquids, like I, I'm vaping this liquid from the UK now. I absolutely love it. I love it. It tastes so good. Is it a current? It's no, it's a, it's a, it's an orange dreamsicle with menthol Ooh. and I add more menthol to it. I'm a big menthol guy, but I need to change the coal every two days. Oh, so wow. I yeah. Use the Go Max. Yeah. Anyway, cause I'd have to throw away the tank yeah. every two days. So I, I'm using the ice up. I like that, that restricted uh, lung hit. Uh, so, but the design of the slide, cause everybody was like, we were in China last year. You know, we go to China every year, which I think this is, I love, different. I love those videos too. Those are some great uh, videos. I think that's one of the. We were the first to go to China to shoot. A, a Beautiful, lot of people that I love it. You forget that in twenty four. They're fun, started. man. They're fun videos. They are, so, and they're really informative too. Yeah. So what we what we do with Inakin is we actually fly to China, sit down with the engineers for two weeks. We just don't, you know, they just don't give a design. We slap our name on it. We try yeah. to help them, and we try to because all, nobody in China vapes. No, none of these factories, none of the Which blows me away. Yeah. All smokers. Yeah, all so smokers. It's it's one thing for me why. to tell them. I want the hole to be 1.2 millimeters. They're going to get that exactly right every time. But if I want to tell them, I want it to taste, I want the vape to be saturated and wet, that you can't put that on paper. So no. we like to sit down there and, and work with them. So we sat down and we looked at the disposable tanks. And the one thing that I brought up is, look, I'm old. I don't like those little fucking rubber plugs that you have to open. The little bung. The bung. And I said, you know, we have the slide tank design on this. Why don't we do that on a disposable? Beautiful. And the engineers were able to do a slide tank disposable, which is very, very easy to fill. It's great for the stores that have to fill on the, yeah. on the go very, very quickly. I think they're great for if you want to go to the beach, you don't want to take a very expensive setup. You take one of these GoMax tanks on a cheap device, whatever, yeah. if you lose it or it's whatever. Good, it's good to have one in, like a, in a glove box too, whatever, like it, for an also emergency. People that vape a lot of flavors. And so, you know, I, um, and you know what? I love that. And you know, one of the, you were just talking about sitting down with the, uh, the CEOs and all the stuff in one of the videos, I remember very distinctly, it was a very kind of nice boardroom, like mad men session with a, a whiteboard and everybody putting on stuff. And you know, it was just really rad, but, uh, that's, our, our, how, that's how it works. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm telling you, this is, we, we get inside. There's yeah. a lot of, and you showed, and you show everybody how, the whole process. And, uh, a lot of stuff is going to be in the book that we can't show because there's a lot of designs on yeah. there now, but yeah. by that time it will be outdated. But yeah. Um, there's a lot of arguing going on simply because there's a battle. There's a battle between Phil. Phil is a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So Phil starts here, right? And I start down here. <laughs> and then we try to meet somewhere in the middle with the engineers and the team because China is all about making cheap. Yep. Right? Eco economical, economically feasible. Exactly right. And Phil designs for, you know, here. So, so it's like we're in a room and it's just like all going on. And then the engineers say, we can do this. We can't do this. And what is it going to cost? And the cost comes into play. If it was up to us, a lot of the stuff that we even have out there now uh, would, would, be, would, be, would have more, for example, you know, we wanted to have, you know, more accessories. I'm all about accessories. Yeah. So, but they're not doing it because of the cost. So, yeah. But it, this is actually how it goes down. Once or twice a year, we're in China to work the projects for the next year and then we work on some of the ideas that Inakin has try to make them better and we work on some of the interfaces i think user interface in my opinion is one of the most underrated um sec i mean anybody can design a device but to design a friendly user interface whether it's an advanced or uh, or or a beginner's device go both ways yeah. attention to that yeah. in the last and you can tell some of these menus you need to be a fucking phd deal to operate your device some, and, and some of those yeehees I, I, those are hard, yeah. man. Those fucking things are hard. You had the Asmodis with the IR scanner where your yeah. fingers yeah, and all that yeah. stuff, and I was a little experienced in vaping, and man, I was just like, okay, one setting, never fuck with it again, and I'm somebody <laughs> that actually messes with it. Yeah, right. So Ra Raven Shadow, Why? Raven oh, Shadow, who yeah. is a who's a who's a wrench on the channel. So I want to get to her question real quick. Uh, Dimmy, what advice would you give to young CEOs to get them to focus more on transitioning smokers? And what would you advise a normal person to do to get local vape shops more involved in advocacy? Okay, so on, on the first part of your question, I've talked to a lot of these CEOs. I actually have clients, you know, I have a company that's called uh, Global Vapor Consulting. And, and I represent some of the bigger liquid manufacturers uh, in the United States on a regulatory framework. This is what I do. I'm not, this is my, my main job. So I've talked to a lot of these CEOs. I think that you're going to see a distinction when the PMTA comes into play. I think once the things tighten down where the government is basically going to tell you you're either going to follow PMTA or you're going to exit this industry, I think that's where it's going to start to separate. As yeah. it stands right now, 
most of those guys that I've talked to, I've facilitated deals. I've done buyouts. I've done this. I sit down and talk to a lot of these young guys. I talked to a guy in California that was trying to be bought out by one of my clients. And he looked at me in the face and says, hey, man, you know what my fucking company is worth? And I said, in 2020, nothing. I mean, you yeah. might think it's worth something now. Yeah. But it's not because yeah. all you're thinking about is how are you going to spend 20 grand on Instagram to promote your brand? Yeah, and this exactly. is spending 20, 30 grand a month on Instagram to promote their brand. So, but I said, when all this, sh when the regulatory kicks in, if you're not part of an umbrella that can finance this next level PMTA, you're going to be back at Starbucks working for eight bucks an hour. God asking right. for running on coffee. God damn and, right. and, but a lot of have that, that thinking just because they never had an extra zero on their paycheck, they got this money. And now they think that the company is worth a tremendous value. The only value in this industry is if you can get through a PMTA. Yep. Absolutely. Your company is valuable there. Uh, I work for a company out of a contract work for a company out of New York. That's a consulting company, not just for the vapor industry. Yeah. They set up uh, uh, investors with consultants in various industries. And I happen to be one of the vapor guys that they have. So I get calls. They set up a call for an hour with a client. You talk to them or whatever, and they ask you questions. And all the calls that I've had from investors have asked me the same thing. Well, two things, Jewel <laughs> and, and PMTAs. Yeah. So if you don't have, if you haven't started on a PMTA that's right a, now, That's exactly what I was going to say. You know, and, and, hey, that's great that they're starting to ask you about it, but... The, they should have known about it. This shit is not new. And, you know, yeah. and that drives me insane seeing all well, these. I'm not taking any, any new clients. So if that, yeah. that tells you anything. Because I love it. Because I'm already working with, with some people. And it's just, if, if, if I wanted to take your money, I, this is another thing that, that bugs me. Because there's a lot of people that do consulting work in this industry that come up to me and say, yeah, give me $2 million. I get your PMTA. <laughs> but guess what? There is no guarantee for a PMTA. Nope. So even if you go through the entire process and you give $2 million, guess you what? Can nothing. They can turn around and say the FDA rejected it. You're shit out of luck. There's nothing shit out of motherfucking luck. Yeah, I'll look at your product and I'll tell you if you have a chance or not. Yeah. I'm honest about that. So I'll tell you if I believe that you have a chance or if you don't, what can you change to, to make it possible? But to think that a PMTA is that I'm going down to the DMV and following, looking at my eyes and passing a test. This is not what it is. This is an extensive yeah. process oh, yeah. that's been designed by nature to not allow new products to come to the market. The design of the PMT is not to allow new products to come to the market. So you have to pass that threshold. It's, 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 a, sur it's a survival of the fittest, weed the fuckers out kind of process. Yeah. Yeah. And I had something on that with the PMT, especially right now, you know, because it's more serious because, you know, it's, it, they, there's a definite date now. It's, it's this year. Yes. A lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of companies out there are afraid to do it first, you know what I mean, and do stuff like that. But there are companies out there that will put you through PMT certification and your company will be cheaper for you. And that's not a crowdsourcing, but if you and four other companies come together, you may hate each other, but P the people that will give you PMTA certification will take five people in if you have the same products, the same flavorings and all that stuff, and do one PMTA that you can all use. Stop trying to fucking be better than the next guy and yeah. do it for keeping the industry alive. The, the, the problem that we have there, uh, Chris, I'm working with a coalition of 34. No, please tell me, please. So I, I'm working with a company, with a coalition of 34 manufacturers, right? <laughs> So we're trying to bridge. Here's the problem. The first meeting that we had, which was last year in Miami at a hotel room, 20, 25 manufacturers came and we sat down. We argued for an hour <laughs> and a half. We argued for an hour and a half. Saw that coming. PG, VG, and nicotine. Yep. Right? Because these people don't understand. They, they're just, they're just, they don't understand the way the regulatory path works. Yeah. We spent an hour and a half on that. Then we spent another hour debating on which one is best flavoring the tpa or whatever which tpa is not going to make it through a pmta anyway so it doesn't make any difference why are you even discussing it yeah. right so unless unless you're willing to understand and listen to to the advice of legal and scientists and all the people that are there you should you don't belong in a, co a coalition sounds great but when it comes to the vape industry with their egos it's and just so much infighting oh my god it's, it's insane so much just being a part of the companies I'm a part of for the last two years, you know, and then seeing how people would react to us or, you know, and the things that people would do or things would put out. And it's, 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 it's a basic thing that a lot of people would say, but it's the truth. It's like a lot of bunch of high school, like clicks. Mm -hmm. you know, That's exactly what it is. Right. Like I said, and like, 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 get along and then, like, you know, like, Oh, well I won't do it if it helps us all because fuck that one guy that would want to be a part of it. Fuck that. It's going to fuck you all up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So just to answer the question for for Cherry, the companies that have their e liquid register with the FDA, will they have an easier path with PMTA? No. Okay. There's so, over 17 million liquids registered with the FDA, and I guarantee you 16 million 
nine hundred and ninety thousand. Yeah, exactly. So I got one more really good question from GBV Jerry, and then we're gonna run the giveaway. How about that? Sound That's like a plan? Thing. Okay. So a lady I work with, her mom had a heart or had heart problems and is on oxygen. I got her the Caliburn pot and was going to get her thirty nick salt, <laughs> but I'm worried it won't be good for her heart condition any suggestions i agree with that and also the caliber is kind of a I like it's a it's a it's a good uh pod system but it's a little bit loose in my opinion i think that people especially with uh with uh copd they they would benefit with a 12 milligram in a tighter draw they can take that short puff mm -hmm. a little quick puff, instead puff, of having yeah. to draw in because copd exactly. is just so constrictive in your in your exactly. pathways right. right so you want to you want a thinner liquid they can absorb the vapor in the mouth and then swallow it without having to work very very hard so I would definitely suggest a 12 milligram tobacco in an open style vapor system with a tight draw. The gem pen, again, I, people think I'm like in it can put out of my pocket, whatever. If you want to put an AIO. You whatever. fucking shill. What are you doing? But, but <laughs> the reason why the, the gem pen was designed with a cigarette draw, it's a, there's no adjustment to it. It's designed, if you puff on a gem pen, it will remind you of a cigarette. The draw is fantastic. That's great. I should, I should, I should look into get one of those for my mom because she's still so hard to train. You know, she, I've got her a little bit here and there, and then all of a sudden she decides she doesn't like the device. I get her another one. She doesn't like that. But that sounds like perfect. And, it, and you said the, the form factor is smaller, correct? Yeah. That's perfect. I, I think, I think if, if, you, if, if you, I think a lot of people forget that when we quit smoking, um, your taste buds change exactly it hugely. Day, it could have been a week, and it could be in two months. I uh, in 2012. You know, I'm a big menth. I never smoked menthol, so isn't that weird? But I like my menthol now. Fucking like gang bang rape my throat. I Absolutely, 100. percent I was a menthol smoker. I couldn't. I don't know. I hated menthol yeah. cigarettes, I but I love a menthol vape. Friends, I just like throat hit. I yeah. think that's what it is. I I, I sub home six milligram tasty troll from Mountain Oak Vapors, which is a you are a crazy right. motherfucker. So and then, <laughs> and all my other stuff is menthol, but um, I, and I think because I like the throat hit. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's, but keep in mind that in 2012 or 2013, I think I was vaping from Raw Vapors, one of the original companies, the Strapple with extra menthol, mm -hmm. strawberry apple with extra menthol. I love that shit. I was vaping it, vaping it. And then one morning I wake up, get my tank, and it tastes like shit. Yeah. I mean, like shit. So I call up Mike. I'm like, hey, Mike, um, I did you change the recipe? This liquid that you sent me doesn't taste. It's this. He's like, no, man. And the guy was swearing up. And I was so upset because, you know, as that all day vape, if something happens, you panic, right? So, but it wasn't him. It was me. Something in my mouth just something that was clogged or whatever just opened up and it wasn't tasting the same. So I think for people that are starting off, it's very, very important to give them that information and say, Hey, listen, in two days or in a week, if it's not tasting right, it could not be the, it's not the device. It's not the, the coil. And it hasn't, cause some don't change their coils in eight months, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's not the coil. It could be the flavor. Let me find another flavor yeah, or yeah. find another flavor that fits. Maybe it's something else that's, that's, that's triggering that as well, too. Very, very important. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And a lot of people that come off smoking menthols, you won't like menthol vapes. Like I, like I said, I was an Newport 100 guy for the longest time, over six years. And then, like, I, menthol vapes, it's not my thing. Yeah. Well, so, the same thing with tobacco. Like, I, I went straight into tobacco liquid and I hated it. Go ahead, yeah. and, go ahead and start x one -ing. Go ahead, continue the no, conversation. Let me, you, let, me, let me show you. My my um tasty troll, I mean this is six <laughs> milligrams and five hundred mils. I mean Holy I, shit. What is that a gallon? <laughs> Twelve milligram. They don't make this anymore. This is subline by Nickwood. They don't make this sixty percent PG. This is my old day MTL uh, vape. It's it has eucalyptus, menthol, all everything inside. Mints, everything. You just throw that shit in that there. Late, that warning right. label is bigger than most bottles. <laughs> right? It looks like a big ass thing of Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's the kind of stuff that I like. I, I like. I like. I think it's the sensation. I like the throat hit, and it's something that, that as a smoker, I've never been able to get over as a vapor. I like that back of a. I run a dual at least eighty plus. With heavy, you know, I have to have that hit too. Yeah. Whether it's mythball or not, I have to have something filled. It's like the pods and all that stuff. I've tried a hundred of them. Yeah. Don't watch any of them. Okay. Yeah. Stop with the X ones. Stop with the X ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fantastic. There's a lot. All right. Why are we spamming? <laughs> are you? Are you didn't X one? Did you? No, I didn't say that. TLC asked why you're standing. Oh, okay. Let me see if there's any questions here. If nobody wants to do the job, I'll do it myself. I'm saying. Oh, okay. All right. All right, bro. Well, oh. you are the only professional on this show right now. You understand that, right? It's after 11. Now we're getting... We're getting <laughs> now it's getting funky time.
Dimitri or Dimi after dark. <laughs> <laughs> Dimitri, while you're while you're busy handling our, our whole situation, can you give me a number between one and three thirty nine? A number wow, that's a big range. Yeah. From one to three thirty nine? Yes, sir. A lot of devils. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Uh let me think. Let me think. Uh let me have it some significance. Uh I will say one hundred. Love it. Perfect. Let's see what we got. It's a one hundred. Oh, nobody. One more time. Nobody? That's all right. I just keep running it till it hits. Oh, that's okay. I'll pick another one if you want. No, 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 no. It's perfect. No, no, no. Because then, then it'll, then it'll get all convoluted, and, and people will think I'm a cheater. Yeah, he's just being selective. I am. Yeah, can we have one more game? One more game. <laughs> Worst number ever, Demi. Worst number ever. I like to make things challenging. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I love it. Oh, so fucking close. While you're looking for a yeah, winner, you guys, you guys uh, keep talking. This is gonna take yeah, a while. While you're looking for a winner, I do, I do want to say that since uh, Breeze Tone is here, I do appreciate uh, the work that you've done down there. I mean, you, uh, your country is unique uh, from the fact that in every country that we have opposition, we've seen some some let up. We've seen some small steps in various countries that we've had a lot of issues with, with vaping. Even here in the United States, we've changed some minds over the years. If you look at Ganowitz here, the professor at the beginning was totally against vaping and slowly through time and science and reading you know, the facts, he's, he's become a proponent for vaping as well too. But in your country, you really have zero fucking support, man. And, it's, and it hasn't let up, which is very, very ironic. In, in your country, when your surrounding countries are supporting harm reduction, so you know I feel for you, I really do, and it's my it's my goal to come to Australia one day. We're talking about it with Inakin, uh, but, um, but yeah, it's got to be tough down there trying to advocate for the product. We have a winner, Mister Cloud King Cody. New to the stream, I'm assuming. Exactly. Say thank you to Mister Dimmy and say thank you to Mister M Turk. Steven, I'll take you up. Uh, I'm, I'm up in Maryland actually quite a lot, to at least two, three times a year. I go to the TMA conference, and then I go to the FDA. All right. The guy that won, I forgot his name already. Cloud King Cody. Cloud King. All right, Cloud King Cody, you here? Type in the yes. chat. You're here. Yes, I'm aware, ID, and uh, you're on our map as well, too. It's legal now. And, yeah, uh, ID Vogue is amazing. I love that guy. Yeah. And you know what's funny is like, you know, there's tons of product that went into Dubai and Abu Dhabi and all these, all black market. One of the biggest distributors in the world is a guy that was moving liquid. I, I remember. All black market. Uh, I think it was like two, three dollars per bottle. Mm -hmm. Bring it just, just the price to bring it in, not including the price of the bottle and all that. But what's really interesting about that region is the vapors there is a very small harm reduction segment. Most of the people that vape there vape for status. So the, the customers there, especially in Dubai, somebody will go in and they'll buy like 30 bottles of liquid. They don't even taste it. They buy 30 bottles of liquid. They have so much money. So yeah, they seriously. Buy, they're just rolling in cash. They open it up. They smell it. If they like it, they don't have, they just toss it. Oh, they're <laughs> parties and they're just fucking, absolutely. They have parties and just fucking give away the- Making the, it rain the, with the liquid. Thing, you know? <laughs> All right, so I, I asked love to open up a shop there. That's for sure. I uh, asked Cloud King Cody in the chat to choose number between one, two, or three because we have three different finishes of the M Turk, and three was the stainless. Boom, stainless. So hey, yeah, Cloud King Cody, hit me up on Instagram as uh, uh, Amigos and Co. or hit up Chris Vandal, uh, and we'll get you. You know, I'm gonna us your name, your address info, and I will ship it out first thing tomorrow morning. Your social security number, please. Okay. Credit card number, preferably Diners Club, and we need the three numbers on the back. And if you have a members only jacket. Yep. Lab work says I'm not willing to give up the fight. Nobody's gonna, I wouldn't be here if I was giving up the fight, but it also could be realistic that you have to follow people. So, exactly. All right, that's just, I can't, I didn't write the law. I'm just telling you how it is. So. Absolutely. I don't know if you're expecting some kind of a miracle. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have to follow PMTA one way or the other. No doubt. Well, that's fantastic, man. You're, you're a killer. You know that? You're a goddamn killer, Demi. Oh, man. I'm just, uh, just a passionate vapor. That's I know. I mean. Yeah, you are. And I love you. All right. And we said it earlier, so I'm going to go back on my word. Now we'll give away a cap set. It'll be one of the Inter cap sets. Okay. Well, I can I can use the same list because I did not I did not delete it this time. And I'm pretty sure everyone that was here is still here. So. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I did. No, I didn't. So obviously, Cloud King, you can't win again, but someone yeah. else. 
Yeah. All right. So, Demi, give me a better number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My range is 100 to, uh, excuse me, 1 to 339. Yeah. All right. 201. 201. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh, so close. So close. So close. And boom, boom, boom. Oh, fuck me. Dimitri, your your life lifesaver device there is that uh, from a boat, or that's uh, tell us a story about that because I that's where my eye always goes whenever I watch you on the shows. Which which device? The life saving device. What do you call those things? The 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 oh, boy. This? Oh, this was a gift from my. Uh... We have a winner. Go ahead. Oh, it's a mirror. This was a gift from my daughter. It says number one dad on it. Oh, that's awesome. Ah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Major pointed out we got two thumbs down tonight. Thank you for coming through. You gave us the views. Cool. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I know who that was. Probably one was Stefan Didak. No, it's no a- he loves me. <laughs> well, I, I'm just getting into this whole YouTube thing and all this stuff. And so someone has taken it upon themselves to go to every video. Because me and Chuck do a Friday night thing where we just kind of fuck off. And Lena's get drunk and be a little belligerent. They've gone through and disliked every one of our photos. Our, our video, excuse me. So shout out to the haters. And so, and it, but, uh, but 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 it, it was. You you shouldn't be doing this for likes or dislikes. No, not at all. That, yeah. yeah it really oh, not, not at all. Really really he's he's, he's very he's very that. obsessed with it because he's new at this. <laughs> <laughs> and if we don't make it there, then we're giving the money back. But our winner for the caps, and I know that he actually has an M Turk uh, V two RTA or RDA already, so it works out well. That is Mr. Vaping Keto Daddy Douglas Otter. Ooh, Boom. Yes. Love it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure the dislike was uh, the dislike was Steve. He did that. Yeah, he does that a lot. <laughs> it's because he didn't talk the whole stream, dude. Fucking leave him. <laughs> you never dislike things. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not us. He's, a, he's a Canadian Australian. He's the happiest motherfucker on the planet. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, well, it's, get, it's getting late. Because it's very, very difficult. I mean, it, you know, when I started reviewing, it was the same way. I bought product until, um, you know, within five, six months. I started off, if you look at some of my early videos, I'm playing classical music in the background. They're horrible. I mean, they're just really bad. But I started off to, to take 40 plus people through my journey. Like my journey that I was going through, I wanted people to understand. <laughs> You're going to leak, you're going to burn, you're going to just keep vaping, trying new stuff. But it's always there. It's even more difficult now in the space where everybody and their mom is a reviewer. I mean, sorry. I mean, there's just way, way too many reviewers. That market's a little saturated. And and, and, and a lot of them are presentations at this point. They're not really even reviews. Like, they're showing the product. There's absolutely no way that you can do it old school like we used to do it and go through two weeks with a product and put it through its paces. I mean, by the time in that queue, you have another 30 products that came in. So I get it. It's more of a presentation. I think at the end of the day, as an entertainment factor, I think vaping was born on YouTube. Yeah. Right. We have mm-hmm. to credit YouTube. but We didn't have stores at the time. We didn't have brick and mortar stores. It was YouTube and some forums that brought this community together created these friendships and out of those sprung multi you know businesses and entrepreneurs and i mean people get so close-minded sometimes but there's a guy that makes scissors to cut cotton this vape vape shears whatever but they donate back (laughs) whatever they do again I'm, i'm i'm bringing it up as like people think about that think about that somebody made a living out of selling scissors or people are literally sitting there wrapping coils with their hands and they created a business out of this industry. Yep. So it, just think about the economic impact that we, and it's all created out of people. Like I'm not saying me personally, I'm saying about the OGs, the people that started back in 2010, 2011 on YouTube, mm-hmm. that's this entire industry. And we always have to go back to the basics. You always have to remember where you came from. Stay humble, uh, do what you want to do. Do it because you're passionate about it. And I think that, it, like in my case, I changed careers mid through this. I was in the restaurant business for 23 years and only just recently I sold my restaurant a year and a half ago. So think about where you came from and always be humble and be thankful for the opportunity that you have. And then if, I think that if you do good work, I think eventually you're going to be paid off. No matter what it is, it doesn't have to be in monetary value, but you're going to be recognized for the work that you do. Heart and soul. That- Label- that's, and keep the fucking drama out of here. The fucking drama is just fucking ridiculous. God damn and right. That's the thing. Hey, that the industry is from what I've learned from being in the short time I have. It's all been basically uh, using things like open platforms, Instagram, YouTube, things like that. 
You know, you don't you don't see vaping advertisements on the radio or nothing or TV. Well, at least you didn't before Jewel happened. You know what I mean? And so like it's very community based. It was kind of it would be like I guess you'd say grassroots kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So it all came together because of people that actually believed in it. We need those people today. We need people like you today. We need people to come off of what you're providing us and to be inspired by that. So all of you that are still here because of that and you still see the bullshit and you still stick through it, thank you. Absolutely. And listen, if you want drama, like me and Phil could make, I could get a million. No, I don't want no fucking this drama, is, Jimmy. I said, wait for me to still be on the I'm just going to give you a hint. So I'm, I'm pimping my book that's going to come out in a year and a half. We're super excited uh, to it. <laughs> but um, we're in China. We're having dinner uh, with a company. And, you know, they're asking us questions, just like they do with all foreigners that come there. Right? You know, they're asking questions. And we said, you know, me and Phil always think about the regular people, not what you see on Instagram and YouTube. We think about the regular people. And we think a very good idea. You know, we're thinking about doing this and doing that on the device and doing that. Two months later, our idea is on a fucking device. Absolutely. We, we, we didn't even get a penny for it. We didn't <coughs> print it for it. This is what really bugs it bugs my mind. It, and we have the whole thing uh, documented as well, too, which is really, really great. I, I could easily go out there and make a video. I think I know what you're talking about. This company fucked my, you know, a yeah, lot yeah. of done that, whatever. I, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying I could have said, oh, this Chinese company, which, by the way, I had no contract because I'm an idiot and I opened my mouth. Yep. Fuck me. Feel sorry for me and buy my shit. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't like to do that. Yeah. I really don't. I think that do your best and uh, and whatever you do in this industry, you're going to be judged by it. And uh, guess what? Ten years later, I'm still here and I still have my integrity intact. And I go to bed with my head uh, um, clean and I sleep well. That's fantastic. And, that's and, that's, and that is a fantastic way to end it because I know it's, <laughs> I know it's late for some people. It's early for others. And I can't tell you how much... I personally, and I know all of us appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, I've, we've been we've trying to get it hammered out for a while. You're you're a, you're a jet setter, a world traveler, and you took the time to hang out with us. And, and we honestly, yeah, truly, yeah, fucking yeah, appreciate it. I was like, oh yeah, dude, I might tune in. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Erica's gonna watch. Erica's gonna watch if Dibby's on. But yeah, no, that's amazing, and we we really we really do appreciate it. Was it was fun. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate every everything you guys do, and uh, every little piece uh, helps. You know, spread the word, and uh, harm reduction is uh, is a real thing. It's helped all of us, so we should be able to uh, to defend our right to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very Indeed. much. Hey. Before we shut it down, make sure that if you want tonight, uh, Keto, we have your info. If I send it again, if you don't mind. And I'm sorry, I don't remember. Cloud King you. Cody. Yeah. Cloud King Cody, please make sure. Amigos and Co on YouTube. Send that over there, and then we'll Instagram. get it sent out in the morning. Thank you, everyone, for coming by. Thank you. Did I win anything? <laughs> you, um, you won the, the pleasure of our company. My first day, but I taste I put weed in. There's still weed in there. <laughs> yeah, no, there's still a bunch of weed in there. <laughs> hey, Tim, you won't get high? <laughs> Breaking news. I haven't said, I, I might have said, I, I don't think I said it with Matt. MVP5 is coming out. Really? Oh. No yeah. shit. MVP next generation, but six and a half thousand million power battery. Whoa. God damn. The comeback kid, baby. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> next gen. I can't so, tell you what it has all in it, but I tell you guys a big. So, so Dimitri, about that MVP, you've got my address, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, hit me up. That's fantastic. You're only gonna pay shipping and handling. I know, right? You're only gonna pay shipping and handling. Where are you at in Canada? Australia. Australia? That's ninety nine dollars. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. All right. Uh, Everybody in chat, all of our new subscribers, all the subscribers we're gonna pick up. Everybody that does our that supports us on Patreon. Everybody that supports us in everything we do. We appreciate you. We appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh, hey y'all. <laughs>